Our judge is Richard Martin. Uh, we're very pleased to have him uh, by the magic of Zoom uh, tonight. Uh, I won't, uh, his philosophy and bio are, are on our internet site, and I think you've all uh, seen it. I'll just take a couple of words right out of his judging philosophy. Ph photographs are essentially emotions that can evoke memories or places in our mind's eye. During the selection process, the photos which tend to generate an emotional impact or feeling often suggest the photographer's original idea and represent their unique personal vision of the world. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Richard. And I think, Steve, you're ready to pull up the, uh, the images. Bill, Bill, I have a message from, uh, uh, from Steve Mo. Um, He says the club la laptop has failed to detect the microphone. So ask Bill if he is able to run the competition, at least for starters, while I try to troubleshoot this. Sure. Or I can run the competition, but Bill would need to do all of the speaking as no one can hear me, but I can hear everyone. Okay. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, hopefully you can all see creative basic two images. Yes. Yep. Can I just say one thing, Bill? Um, do you have every do you have everybody's mics turned off or does that make a difference? Yeah, that'd be it's be good if everyone would would mute themselves while we're going through this. Back, background noise, right? It kind of echoes if it <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so creative basic two images. Fading everything to black and blue, counting crows. As I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about, um, you know, evaluation or review, I want to sort of treat it like, um, like I would if I was reviewing uh, images from a workshop and so on. But um, yeah, so I hope that everything I say makes sense. Um, this image, this image is pretty interesting. And it's, first of all, the high contrast and the graphic qualities are very intriguing. And, you know, the close up of the fly and the eyes being blue in this image. <clears throat> it's certainly a very graphic image and it has a lot of impact that way. And um, yeah, so I, I think that um, I don't, okay, so I, I always look for, uh, the thing I mentioned before was I, I look for the, the general impression and the emotional response. And of course that's gonna be different with each viewer. Um, but I, I look in terms of design, I look for um, the central idea and what competes with that. And this image, I don't have any issues uh, any conflicts with the design, the framing. When I say framing, I mean the actual, the composition, the way it's been selected in the in the viewfinder arena. So uh, sometimes that's uh, could be commented on, but I don't have any issues with um, the composition and the way that the message is conveyed in that picture space. So um, yeah, so we can go on to the next one. Things may not be as they appear. This one really is really intriguing and has some ambiguity to it as well. And it's a straightforward photograph and uh, it's quite, uh, quite interesting in that the, the sphere that is photographing the, uh, the bridge through is a, you know, a perfect circle. And when you think of um, design, basic elements of design like shape and the very varieties of shapes like circles, triangles and rectangles or squares, um, I think there are very strong, strong shapes draw the eye. <clears throat> and certainly the circle here of that glass sphere is a very strong, stable uh, shape. And the position of that in the picture space is important in the organization of the picture of the image. So I think that the photographer has done a great job of the placement within the picture space. And we were joking before about rules. And I think instead of thinking about rules, I would suggest photographers think about relationship in the picture space. Um, so, you know, the relationship of that circle with against the frame, whether it's left, right, center, and so on, I think it works really well in this situation. And the fact that it has a base that it's sitting on, and not all photographs require a base, but I think it's nice the way it sits, situates in, in the picture space. Um, so I think that's very, very well done. I think it's a really wonderful, moody, image and um, I love the color in this as well. I'll, I will be talking about ideas about some images may work better in black and white and because it might be more appropriate. But in this case, 
color in this image is very appropriate and certainly in my opinion and all these are my opinions by the way they're not you know is this my opinion so okay this is a wonderful image so next okay creative <clears throat> intermediate five images Ganawa villagers dance in the Sahara Desert region of northern Mar Morocco. Interpretive. Yeah, so this is a, this is a, you know, the, in terms of composition, this wonderful composition and the arrangement and the placement of the, of the people <coughs> dancing and the gesture of the people in the picture space. And it's highly stylized, which is part of this category. Um, so, you know, compositionally, I think everything fits in the picture space or it's organized really well. So I don't have any issues there. Um, sometimes, you know, this is a very small point, but I notice a lot of times on my workshops and looking at images that the consideration of space on the edges, <clears throat> you know, if you look on the right-hand side, now again, this is a very, very small point, um, the closeness that, of that figure on the right-hand side relative to, this, relative to the space on the left-hand side of the, of the last figure, I mean, these are just very small points of fine tuning. And so I want to try and make these comments <clears throat> to make you think about that stuff too. And you know, sometimes it's difficult to, to see that in the viewfinder because a lot of us look through smaller viewfinders. And, uh, but it is something important like taking a little look around the edges before you shoot. And uh, certainly that's easier when you're using a tripod and, but not as easy to do when you're hand holding because you have to, you know, your stationary position is not like a tripod. Although, you know, in this situation, I'm sure that handheld was the obvious way to shoot this because it's very spontaneous. Um, okay, so next picture. Deep in the roots, all flowers keep the light. This one had a lot of impact, a lot of emotional impact for me. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I think this is really, really wonderful. The, the exposure, the, the expressive qualities of the exposure and uh, the saturation of color, the design, the flaring of the, it looks like a very luminous flare of light. Could be just dragging the motion, the, um, I don't know what it is, it doesn't really matter. You know what, it doesn't really matter how a picture is made is what matters is how it, how it um, affects your, your, your response to it. And, um, you know, I love the dynamic position, the, the dynamic stem position coming up and curving to the top and the flaring going upwards. Certainly it's expressive of a very positive um, emotion, very positive expression. So, and, and you know, the green, blue and the dark background is, is very graphic. So I think this is a very striking image and uh, very well done. Lucy, smile. I like this very, very simple minimalist approach, even, you know, it's probably a neon sign, but um, it's symmetrical, but it's not symmetrical because the left and right edges have different twists on them. Um, it's just a very simple approach and, and a very, you know, sometimes simplicity and, and minimalism works as it is. And the high contrast certainly gives it um, a lot of impact graphically. So um, yeah, I quite like this image. Portrait of a Dahlia. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's just well, well designed, well executed, and um, um, no problem at all with the composition. There's no parts of this composition that, that conflict with the message or is visually uh, confusing. Um, and I don't know, is this the rule of thirds? We were joking about that earlier, but um, yeah, but you know, the position, when, you, when you're photographing something, you, as a photographer, you have the choice of, do I position this left, right, center? And I think if you think about the relationship of the uh, end of the frame, how it relates to the edges is something. And again, you have to do that from your own gut feeling. And uh, But in conclusion, this is really well uh, composed and uh, I like this. Shine for show. This is really interesting. You know, when I first looked at, when, what I first did when I received the images is I, I went through the entire body of work and then i let it sit marinate for a while and then i come back a few hours later and i go through them in detail and i keep going through them again this was interesting in that this is the absolute this is abstract in one way but it's an absolute physical focused recording of of, of physical car and uh so it's that that kind of interesting contrast between the the distorted reflection 
which I maybe it duped me, maybe it's maybe it's not, but but it's it looks like the chrome bumper is reflecting another car. And uh, I think that that contrast between the surreal abstract reflection and the actual physical tire and axle of the car is an interesting contrast and it kind of gives you something to think about. Um, so graphically speaking, that's uh, that's intriguing. And it's interesting when you have text um, like Super Sport and here it's, it's amazing, um, or even on the tires, right? <clears throat> when you have text in an image, I find that it really draws attention whether it's good or bad. It's something to think about. When you're really <laughs> text. But this is just really, really beautiful image. Radio advanced category, <clears throat> four images. The diving bird from my dream. I like this image. It's, it's got a, it's a wonderful uh, saturation and tonality. And um, it looks like um, a reverse montage, but that doesn't matter. But I, I like the, the, you could, there's so many ways to interpret this and it depends on what you bring to the work. Um, but it's, it's kind of sym symmetrical, but it's not ex exactly symmetrical. Um, but I like the way this blends together and you can, depending on your imagination, you know, you can, you can uh, connect with different uh, symbols within the picture. But I, I think that the design and the impact, it has a, is a pretty positive uh, feeling to it. And um, I, I do like that the saturation is very appropriate as an expressive quality of the picture. It's almost like a portrait of, of somebody's portrait, right? Um, but I mean, you know, it depends on how long you've been locked up on, under pandemic. <laughs> okay, the next picture. Landscape. This is pretty abstract and it reminds me of, um, I mean, it's highly stylized. I like the design and it reminds me, you know, it reminds me of water and ice, but it may not be that, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it, it almost, it reminds me of um, watercolor painting on handmade paper or a textured watercolor paper. So, the, you know, the textural qualities of the, the abstract image, but it's, it's really interesting and um, it holds together um, because if you, if you, sometimes I ask the students to squint or throw a picture out of focus and, and look at the distribution of highlights and or color or tonality. So there's a fair good, fairly nice balance of white because on the upper, the upper left side has a very bright area of white. And I think that is paid off by or, or balanced by the, the lower right hand part of shape, which has a very light tone as well. So that has a that has a nice sense of of balance or what attracts your eye within the picture space and how it moves around it. Those are little devices that kind of look for as supporting supporting elements within the design. I often kind of unconsciously look for. Yeah, so this is great. Next image. Lavender explosion. This is beautiful. Uh, it's a lot of power, a lot of energy. And it's very dynamic. And, and I often hear people say, well, you know, maybe I, you need a center of interest, but don't let anyone tell you you need a center of interest when the center of interest is the pattern itself. And uh, this is looks like a zoom during exposure um, as a technique, <clears throat> but the, the tonality is wonderful. There's no highlights that distract, detract from the image, the saturation, the color contrast, or the harmony of color you know, between the, the uh, blue, purple, or green. Um, and there's variations of those hues as well. So it has, you know, it, it first of all, it evokes the energy and, and power. So um, very effective. And it doesn't, I, I don't mind having that central part, you know, being in the center. I mean, you know, it's, sometimes it doesn't work, but it, it works in this case for this, this expression. Next. Tattered. This is a very interesting graphic and, um, Back when I did a workshop in India, I photographed a lot of fishing nets and I uh, was really intrigued by these textures. And I don't know what this is, it looks like a fishing net, but it doesn't really matter. And this also appears to be a reverse montage. So you have this symmetry, um, but it's very appropriate. Now it looks black and white, and but it's very monochromatic. And I think that's very appropriate for the expressive qualities of the design. And um, I think if this was color, it would um, prob it would it may take away from that those subtleties. I may be wrong about that, but I haven't seen it in color. But um, yeah, so the symmetry and the the design is quite striking, almost like a pencil drawing. 
And um, so it's quite, quite wonderful. And it did, this, this image really stood out uh, for me in that grouping. I looked at so many groupings within the categories and uh, I went through them quite a few different times, but um, I do remember this one, yeah. Creative masters, five images. Impressive kiss. This is an interesting image. And you know, this is, I think this is one of those situations. Um, it took me a couple of times to look at this, to, to uh, focus on the, the guy in the middle and uh, the person in the middle. And he, so I think that maybe the, the, the combination of the color and the, uh, the pushing the, um, the technique a little far, I, I'm losing, the, I don't seem to see the definition in there as much as, so I think that, you know, again, it's just my opinion, but I, I think that if, if I could see the definition a little more readily in the technique or whatever techniques was used in creating this um, effect, it might be more powerful. And uh, I, I'm, I'm talking mainly about the very center of the picture. <clears throat> you can certainly see the figure on the other side so this might be a case, and I don't know unless you experiment, if you experiment with it, is if, um, if the color was less intense. It's just my opinion and, uh, and maybe a little more definition on edges for that. But the composition, I mean, it, it, I have no issues at all with the composition. I'm primarily speaking about, about the saturation and the delineation of the edges, <clears throat> which is part of the processing. So it might be nice to see this image. You know, you can interpret an image in so many different ways. And uh, it might be interesting to see different, other different ways of interpreting this original image as well, because you have the bones, the structure, the design, it's all there. The rest of it is, is, is for the viewer's impression of um, those things like color and, and contrast. Okay. Another dawn, another tourist spot to visit. <clears throat> this is pretty striking with the, you know, the long exposure to create this um, movement in the boat. And it does, it does create a pre pretty interesting um, new reality from the slow exposure and certainly interesting shapes. I like, you know, the contrast between the, uh, the yellowish lights and a little bit of red within the sea of blue, no pun intended. And uh, so I think this was quite striking as a graphically simple image. And the position of the boat is quite nice within the picture space. And um, as it seems to be moving towards the, um, towards the left. Or it may be, I may be wrong on that too. It could be going the other way around, but it doesn't matter. It's just an impression. So yeah, I like this. The dilemma of self. I quite like this image as well. Um, I love the overlapping circles and that uh, when shapes, overlapping shapes and within those overlapping shapes, you have areas of color. So you have like um, three, three areas of red from the person in the red in the picture space and the position of those shapes and the space around those shapes are, is well, well, uh, well situated within the frame. So, uh, and there's plenty of wonderful streaking movement. And uh, so there's a, there's a nice sense of uh, curved lines that gently move through the picture space. So I think, you know, it's the, the viewer gets to, uh, or enticed to explore all the areas of the picture space, moving around and around the circles and staying within the frame. And uh, it certainly has a nice feeling about it. I think, I don't know if you ever think about it, but you know, circles are there's such, such a symbolism in circles. There, there's no tension in a circle, like in a, in a square, there's, you know, you can't corner somebody in a circle. So it's completely resolved as a, there's no, it's not so much tension, but it expresses a lot of different things. You know, it's like the hug or the mother holding a child, all those sort of um, uh, structures that, you know, in culture we have sort of embedded in our minds. But anyway, so it's a very positive thing and you can go on with other symbolisms in circles too, but. Yeah, I think this is really nice and overlapping is wonderful. Uh, next. Diamonds of light. This is quite striking too. Graphically strong, um, looks like a multiple exposure. And um, 
you know, it's, it's got that movement, a circular movement with the repeating shapes and sort of the continuity within the picture space seems to work really well. And the contrast of colors, although very subtle, and I like the, um, the way that uh, vibrates throughout the picture space. And I think this is really, really well executed and it's good composition. No issues with the framing and the position of the, uh, of the shapes within the picture space on this. The illustrated man. Okay, this, yeah, this is really interesting too. That this is a interesting technique and uh, it's definitely well defined and um, it is, is very well done. And I think color, you know, the color is very striking and, you know, the contrast with the dark background and it's very dynamic in the position of the shoulders moving downward in a, you know, a very um, dynamic position. Um, and I think that relationship between the blue on the top of the head and the blue in the body sort of gives it continuity as well, ties it together. Like that visual back and forth of the, of the color continuity. So well done. Pictorial, basic eight images. Have a set at dawn. I really like the graphic qualities of this image. I, you know, I kept coming back to it and um, <clears throat> it's, um, you know, first of all, the punctuation, what the bird is highly identifiable as a silhouette with its reflection. So I think of that as a punctuation or a point of interest. And um, so, and, and bu you build around that with other elements in the picture space. So I, I would think that, you know, that's the, that's the focus. So, so when you compose an image, you know, you have the subject, which is the bird, and then you build elements around it by you know changing focal length and moving around. So you have that grouping of reeds, the grasses, and then you have a strong dark shape also silhouetted in the picture of the land formation at the bottom. So it all fits together very nicely, and I think you know the placement of the bird within the relationship of the frame seems to be very pleasing uh, overall. So this is very well executed, very well done. Dark Holiday Festival at Tombstone, Arizona. I like this uh, nostalgic uh, processing on this in the sense that it's, it looks like a toned image and uh, it's certainly um, in harmony with the subject matter. The only thing that um, would be nice to, and it's something you can't control as a photographer as much as, is the people standing in front. Um, it would be great if, if they weren't, um, you know, so, so posed in the picture in a sense that they, they, they see you making the photograph. I think, I know it's easy to say that, but uh, it'd be nice if they were just interacting or something else as opposed to just sort of standing there. But I think that would make it a more interesting picture if you, so you have this sort of stage in the, in the composition, which is the building. And then, you know, when you're in the streets, I always look for the characters in the play, which I call the characters of the people that are moving around. So if they were walking into the door or walking out or interacting with each other, I think it might be a, be a stronger, I think it would make a stronger image. And that's not always easy to get that to happen for you when you're photographing, but um, it's just a comment I wanted to make that that would be interesting, would make it interesting as an element of human scale. Okay. The Eva Parker Woods Cottage at Kalahi Pua's Hawaii. This is very well done and no, no issues compositionally here. There's nice, nice tonality in the sky and a nice arrangement of the building and the trees and the water in the foreground and so on. So it's just well, well executed. Um, no issues compositionally here. Uh, very pleasing. Billy. I like this image with the following the tracks. And I'm not sure what format this is. Um, I was just, I was wondering when I was looking at this, if it, um, if it would be, and I don't know, I don't know until you, if you try this, but I know that the, if the format, I was wondering if the format was more rectangular as a vertical, um, if that would strengthen the line of the tracks of the dog. But I do know there's the idea of that island in the upper right, which is very important. 
So, I mean, this is, if, if the viewer is here or can hear what I'm talking about here, um, it might be interesting to, um, to, if you were to crop this as a rectangle, I mean, there's so many different formats, but I've worked in film for so many years with 35 millimeter and it was like a two thirds kind of format. I know it's fairly skinny compared to four by five, but I was wondering if you took that two thirds format and started at the right hand side, but didn't touch the right hand side, but just cropped it at the two thirds, you would, you would take the center, you would take the tracks off the, where it is, it would move it more to the left. And maybe it would balance that island with the dog as a diagonal. And you would have the tracks coming up and the eye going over to the thing. This is a, an idea that I think if you can hold your hand up there, you might be able to see that effect. And it's just an idea, a suggestion, but I think it's a really wonderful image. There's nothing wrong with necessarily with the way it is. I just want, I'm always wondering about uh, different formats. And um, even though I've been shooting with film all my life with my mirrorless camera, I have the option of changing formats and I, I play around with four by five and um, which is a camera I used to have too in square format and, you know, 35 mil. And uh, anyway, so it's just an idea, something to think about for any picture. Yeah. Twisted contrails over the Mayakamas Mountains. Okay. Just as, an, as a footnote to the last picture, this is, I think this is a two thirds, kind of a two thirds format, the old film style, 35 mil. That's what I was referring to for the previous. Just curious for that. Okay, so this, this is a beautiful impact. I mean, obviously the, the sunset backlighting or creating this color on the clouds is quite striking. It has a lot of energy. Is this all this flying upwards and moving upwards? And, you know, having that silhouette of land at the bottom. Um, it's kind of nice when you have, sometimes you have wonderful cloud formations and and uh, you want to anchor them to the land. And I think this is re really well done with the, with the bottom part, with the uh, areas of trees and dark landscape. And um, yeah, I don't, on my, on my computer, which is calibrated and everything, I think maybe the, and again, it depends on, you know, the maker, it depends on, on the calibration of your own system. When you submit something, it doesn't always get seen the way it is on your own computer when you're processing it. <clears throat> but I think, you know, it, it might be heavy handed on the color on the cloud. So that's something to, to check out. Sometimes you can just tweak it back a little bit and it depends on your process, but yeah. So, but I design wise, spectacular, love the composition, love the creativity and the idea here. River at dusk. This is a great treatment in, in black and white and, and almost has an, in, I mean, maybe it is infrared. I'm not uh, as familiar with infrared, but it doesn't really matter because techniques shouldn't get in the way anyway. But what I want to say is that I love the luminosity of the lighter tones of foliage. I think that, you know, gives it the contrast and gives it that uh, emotional feeling, the lighter tones mixing with the darker tones and as they make a reflection in the water. So it has a nice, a nice feeling to it, a somewhat nostalgic and, um, and black and white again, for some people can be nostalgic too, depending on what, what your history is of making images and what experiences you've had with, with photography. And so if I'm talking to young people that have never used film, they don't, they don't, they wouldn't understand what I'm talking about sometimes when, unless some of the young people are really, really into film though, but for the most part, the nostalgia for black and white is going to be different for a 20 year old than it would be for me. Um, but uh, I do like, this is really expressive and it's quite a nice feeling. Pretty in pink. I thought this was very powerful composition, extremely powerful composition. Not, not, a, not anything wasted in this frame and the position of all these shapes really progressed quite nicely for me. And I have a friend who focus stacks, you know, everything 100% sharp front to back all the time. And I said, you got to loosen up, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, this is a good example. I, like, I should show him this. Um, this is a good example of not having the back in focus is actually more powerful because it, it almost brings forward the foreground. Now, again, it's really an appropriate thing. Yeah, I do agree there are times when having everything in focus is really good to have. And I'm not arguing about that, but not everything though. And I think this is one example where 
it's a powerful thing where the, the outer focus on the back is really emphasizing the front. But the rhythm here of the scaling of the sizes as it goes backwards is, is quite striking. And it's some, one of the better, uh, call, uh, one of the better flower photographs I've seen in a long time. And uh, it's very rich, I guess I should say, uh, it's very rich in tone. And it's not, doesn't appear to be oversaturated to me. But again, I'm speaking from my impact on it based on my life experience. And so that's, you have to take that with a grain of salt. But I think this is very powerful for me. And um, yeah, so next image. Take off number two. This is also spectacular. Um, Wow, I just I kept coming back to this again, and there's so many good images that you know I took a lot, I took my time coming back and forth, and I'm a very stickler for I probably spend more time than I should trying to evaluate things, but I want to make the evaluation within the context of the body of work that I'm looking at. This was, I mean, I, there's there's I don't see there's anything wrong. There's nothing that takes away from the expressive quality. So what the, I'm assuming the photographer was doing here. There's no elements of distraction. The uh, relationship between the bird and its environment, the layers of the marsh, the background hills with the clouds, there's all this beautiful strata going all the way through. And I, I really think that the processing was extremely um, um, appropriate to express this idea. It certainly worked here. Um, I think that sometimes in a situation like this, color can get in the way in that the bird may have to compete in color with the color of the sky, the color of the reeds. Whereas here you you can, it seems to, my eye seems to keep resting on the bird and it's beautifully focused and uh, positioned. So it's, it's a wonderful capture and um, very evocative. Intermediate, five images. Alpine Glow Reflection on Colby Lake, Kings Canyon National Park, California. This was pretty interesting. Um, I, I really like that little twist in the cloud and it reflects back in the water again. It's, it's quite an a interesting element in the picture space. And uh, it would certainly be a very different image without that. I mean, it'd be a very quiet image, but that kind of, that curving cloud adds a little dynamics, a little bit of tension to the whole picture. Also the asymmetrical part of that as well, the cloud being on the left-hand side. And uh, so it creates a little bit of tension in the picture and a little contrast for that tranquility. And there's always pictures within pictures. And um, certainly also, I wonder if the maker made photographs of the bottom too. And uh, often in situations like this, I'll, I, will, I will work my way through from, from a scene and then I keep getting more and more abstract and I, I start seeing stuff in the bottom of that picture, which would be quite wonderful too. And I'm sure that they have those. Sometimes you have to work very quickly because light changes so fast. So many possibilities. So the worst thing is when you're in a situation <clears throat> where there's like so many possibilities, you just don't know where to turn. But um, yeah, so this is quite striking. I like this. Mirror image. I always love this kind of graphic simplicity of kind of the ordinary. And uh, this, you know, it's somewhat, it's somewhat abstract presentation. I mean, probably we know that it's a car, but um, it's in terms of, like I mentioned, we were chit-chatting before that I like to, I look at subject matter without the labels and I don't look at the value of something. I look at it purely as, it was, as design. And, you know, from here, this, this abstract quality is, is very beautiful shapes and uh, shapes created by tonal contrast and caused by light. And um, well designed, well composed. I'm very curious how this would be. I think this would be, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, I think this would be a lot stronger in black and white. And I think it's because for many of us, color, color can, can get in the way or compete with our emotional response to things because less, whether we like it or not, we have biases to color. That's why, you know, we, if you can shop for something and it's the same thing, but it's in many different colors, we, we choose colors if we can. But I think aside from all that psychology of color, I think that in black and white, this would be a little more abstract 
in this in this uh, in this presentation. So if the maker could process this in black and white and just for their own learning purposes, um, compare that and, and ask some other people what they think about the differences. And keep in mind, it's not about, these things are not about right and wrong. These things are about, well, this is more expressive because of this, or it's more expressive because of that. And it's, you can never, never get in the habit of right and wrong because there is no right and wrong in creativity and art. Um, anyway, so I hope that makes sense, but I can, I can see the graphic possibilities. I use, um, I use, I used to photograph black and white film, but I process my digital stuff and uh, I've been using Nix silver effects. And I know Topaz also has wonderful software too. Um, you can make some really nostalgic sort of looking uh, analog style black and white. And uh, you can also do it in black and dark and Lightroom as well. Anyway, that's my comment on that. And I just wanted to make that point. So I hope I don't make it, hope I don't beat that to death too much about the black and white thing, but I think it's worth, I'm, I'm still growing in my photography after 30 some years and I, and I always want to keep learning. So you know, wherever stage you're at, there's always room to learn more. Next. Pretty pride. This is a high impact uh, portrait. I mean, it's very direct. Um, I like the position of the face. Uh, it's definitely has a strong connection, right? And uh, it's a beautiful image. I have no, no issues with this image at all in terms of its composition or its execution. I think having it, uh, by having it framed out to the hair, um, there's no distraction from the face. It's just very much framing the face and uh, it's definitely uh, a direct portrait. And uh, you know, it's very well done. I left my heart. Another, hey, is it ever foggy on the, on the bridge? <laughs> 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 I love I love the mood there. Hmm. This is very this is wonderfully graphic and uh, um, certainly the pattern of all these locks on the on the fence. And uh, sometimes I would think about you know do we include the top part of that fence, but it creates a little angle. And you know looking at this, I, I don't think that it's an issue at all. Um, I, li I like the way that the angle of the, the top of the fence on the upper right mimics the uh, cables on the bridge coming down behind the fence on the left. And then of course, there's another angle of the, of the actual bridge part where the cars drive. So you have these lines that are subtle though in the back, kind of in the background, but uh, certainly the pattern of the locks filling the frame is the subject matter. And, but you do get the sense of that context and the atmosphere within it. So I think this is very well done. And, and I think this is a really wonderful image. San Francisco Bay Bridge at sunset. And uh, this is a really nice color too in this image. And I think the, it's nice that the bridge at the very middle bottom portion is, um, has light on it. So it defines that point, but otherwise it's, it's a well done, uh, um, sunset. And I, I do know that I remember that point of view from being there several, several years ago. <clears throat> Advanced nine images. Follow the road to the Milky Way. It's very, very uh, interesting image and certainly the mood of the, uh, the Milky Way and, you know, w whether or not it's was shot at the same time, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but it has, it's a beautiful, like the leading line of the, of the roadway coming in the path of the lines of the, of the road. I think it's a pathway for a vehicle coming into the building is a beautiful, uh, uh, introduction to the bottom of the design. And then the, the mood overall mood is very wonderful. Um, you know, with the sky and, and the, so it's well executed and, uh, certainly has nice impact. Pathway to gold. This is wonderful too. I, I, I like the, there's a sense of a pathway and there probably is a pathway that coming in from the bottom towards the left, sort of slightly going towards the right and moving into the picture space. So it invites, invites a viewer into the, the picture space and it, the, the, the blue sky and the way the foliage is lit um, is, well, is well exposed and it, um, it's a very inviting image and uh, certainly evocative of a time of year. So it's, it's well done and I think it's um, well designed as well as an image. 
Cincinnati skyline as seen from Newport, Kentucky. This is pretty good. This, I mean, this is like not good. I mean, it's, it's a weird thing to say. This is pretty good. This had a nice impact. And I think um, the exposure in the sky, the exposure of the reflections of the city, city line, skyscrape, skyscrapers, I think that's, they're, they're, they work so well together and the lighting on the bridge. I mean, it's amazing to get that exposure all tied together and, um, and it's, it's certainly a beautiful, beautiful image. I have no issues compositionally. It's got a wonderful design. And technically speaking, that is really well processed and, uh, and technically crafted well. So I, and it's a very strong image. Reflections in the mist. It's also a wonderful image. I'm wondering, I'm just wondering what, I know mean, there was effect applied to the, um, there was effect applied to the trees. Uh, I, I, I wonder what it was like before that. I don't know if that's, if the stylized part of that takes away or not. It just depends on getting used to that, but I, it's a wonderful, wonderful design and uh, certainly a beautiful uh, foggy atmosphere. And uh, I love that. And I'm just wondering if, um, I would like to see that also um, without the effect applied. Not that it takes away from it, but um, just curious about that. But it has a, it's a beautiful image. Not, I'm just curious about um, what, um, how those trees looked without the processing like that. Cause it has a beautiful mood. Great blue heron at Rodeo Beach. Definitely amazing focus and shape of this, like the shape of this bird along with his um, the feet and the picture space is quite striking. And um, it's so, so wonderfully focused. It's always easy to, um, to nail the focus. I like this design a lot. And I mean, the framing is, is seems to work really well with the shape and um, yeah, I have no issues with this at all. I mean, you know, there's even the background. I mean, the background sufficiently out of focus to to really have the, allow the bird to stand out, to pop out. Yeah. It appeared to me as a comet in the sea, <clears throat> stellar sea lion. When I first did the initial look at all the images, this really um, really stood out to me from many different levels, but. Um, and, you know, I keep coming back to it and yeah, it's extremely interesting. And, and th the cool thing is that it, it looks, um, on, on the, um, on the surface, it, no, no pun intended again, on the surface, it looks so abstract. Like I'm thinking like in my, the way my mind works is like, is this, this is like an abstract I would photograph of, you know, aluminum or something like that. But then, you know, you look at it and you look at it and it's just, 100% real focused nature and um, the way the water is lit by the, the sunlight on the water, the curvature of the water around the, around the sea lion. Um, it's just a wonderful work of art. And um, so it's kind of like a, it's for me, it's kind of like a marriage of art and, uh, and recording with the camera, which, which goes back to a vision, right? At the, at the same time. And of course, one needs to have the craft to be able to execute ideas, you know, creative ideas. But, you know, design-wise, the, the orientation in the picture space is very dynamic, suggests movement, which it is. So, uh, no other, I can't, there's nothing I can say about to take away from the position or the camera or the um, picture space orientation and so on. Yeah, so all good things. It's very, very nice image, extremely nice. Into the forest. This image is also really wonderful. Um, the texture filling the frame. There's no large areas of of sky that uh, competes for the attention. So the eye is drawn to the textures. It's very much an image about textures, shapes. And that fence has a nice suggestion of walking past through the picture space. 
And um, yeah, it has a, a wonderful evocative feeling of, uh, I just want to, uh, it's a moody kind of place to, to spend some time and explore. So it's very successful uh, composition. State of wonder. It's pretty interesting. This is pretty amazing, um, graphically speaking, and then the the, the uh, scale with the, the the sense of scale with the human element here. Um, quite quite striking. I love that. I'm wondering if if the person in the picture wasn't looking towards the camera, would that be more interesting? There's something like I'm asking you to think about in terms of of the photograph. If this person was actually repelling, I think, I forget the terms for that, but going up or down the rope, um, instead of looking at the camera, I'm wondering if that would make it a different, different strength in the picture, kind of like the, the one with that uh, toned photograph with the people by the door looking at the camera. There's something I want you to think about, about that kind of thing. The background is wonderful. I mean, the use of scale, I mean, if you didn't have a, a human element there, you know, not that you always need scale. Some pictures benefit from scale and some don't. And uh, certainly without the scale, you wouldn't have that sort of a sense of space there. So it comes down to being appropriate or not. So anyway, that's our, those are the comments on that. Oops. This is really powerful. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it shows you that no, I don't even know what this is and I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me, but I photograph the kind of things that are on the script that look like something else, but I forget about all that. This is just organically wonderful. And um, it's kind of like, you know, Frank Gehry kind of architecture, but, and uh, I love that the blue, tint of blue in the bottom, the tint of blue on the top has a continuity to bind it together. And then of course, this would be wonderful in black and white. However, I think it's, I like it in color because the emotional connection with those colors, the brown and the blue. And, um, you know, I'm assuming it's bent metal, but um, it's such a beautiful organic qualities that you find in nature, but you can also find in man-made, you know, throwaway stuff or rexed, you know, sort of junkyard kind of thing or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, could be a bent garbage can, but who cares? Um, anyway, so design-wise, fantastic. Um, no issues with the composition, it it's really works well. And this is a very powerful image, so bravo to uh, the maker on this. Pictorial Masters, eight images. Dia de los Muertos. This is a wonderful image too, with the, the colorful smoke in the background. I'm assuming it's colorful smoke. Or, um, and the, the, the energy and the dance here and the color, color interaction, certainly very powerful capture. And that certainly the moment in time, the timing of the exposure. So it's definitely evocative and uh, dynamic. It's very, very well executed. Sunday drive through a majestic redwood forest. Very powerful image. I remember this one caught my eye when I went through that group. And uh, wow, I mean, the, the richness of tonality and you just want to be there. And that old car is so, so cool. Um, but the dappled light coming through the trees and onto the ferns and repeating on the other side, on the right-hand side as well, those little streaks of light tying the whole thing together across the highway. And uh, again, at the top, you have this triangle of light tones, which defines the mood of that atmosphere. So very, very well executed in terms of capturing a, a moment in time and capturing an emotion of place. You know, so sometimes that's very difficult to do is capture a place and a feeling about a place. And uh, certainly has this wonderful, wonderful quality of light. So it's very, very, very powerful image like this. Some days I just need some zebra. <laughs> Interesting title. Um, you know, first of all, it's just a very graphic 
and uh, very comical too. I love, I'm a big fan of Gary Larson, the far side. And uh, I'm always, it's always wonderful to look for, you know, a little bit of humor in a picture. Depends on someone's sense of humor. Uh, Elliot Erwitt was, was another photographer. Elliot Erwitt did a lot of interesting juxtapositions of comical images, but uh, graphically speaking, this is fantastic. I mean, this would be great in black and white, but I do like it in color. The background color is quite wonderful and um, evocative and goes with the whole image. So I think this is very powerful and certainly, you know, certainly can create a lot of uh, joke comments about this too. I'm sorry, there's lots of that, but I like it as a, as a graphic image. Morning Lake. It's wonderful light, it's beautiful. Um, the dappled light, sunlight on top of the trees, the foliage, and that little reflection in the water. It's a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, I have no, no issues compositionally. I mean, even, you know, the top part where it has a little opening in the sky is not, doesn't really sufficiently take away your eye from the rest of it. It's nice to have that context. Sometimes larger areas of bright skies can compete with a viewer's attention, but I don't think that's sufficient enough to, it's nice to have a little bit of room to escape to as well in terms of that top. You know, the only question is, you know, is there, is there another element missing in the picture space in terms of that composition? Now it's, it's easy to say that, but you know, when you're making these photographs, you, you don't, can't make that stuff happen, but uh, you can't impose something in there. But I think that's that's something debatable for different different people. But um, I think overall it's really well done, and I love the uh, evocative mood of this image. All quiet. Yeah, I like I like this very moody. I mean, I know this is darker a darker image but the repetition of shapes and combined with that whole ambiguity of what is this um because i don't have a sense of scale which doesn't matter i mean when you don't have information that means you can interpret it on your own level and get more involved with the picture we don't always need to know everything about something and sometimes when we do know the labels of something we're looking at, we stop looking at it or stop enjoying it because we already know the labels. I think it's natural for a photographer to want to know what things are, but in general, the viewer can be better not to find out and just interpret them on their own levels. Um, but I do like the repetition, the graphic qualities, the mood and the ambiguity of this. And I have no, there's no issues to comment on composition. I think it's well, well composed and, and framed in a pickle. I like the luminous quality here, uh, both light and color. And this shows it's another example of um, something ordinary that can be quite interesting. Um, the color, the colors and the shapes, and the mix that that blue bluish uh, color is wonderful in contrast to the greens and a little bit of a reddish brown on the bottom part. And it doesn't really matter the label of it, but uh, I think it's a nice abstract. Almost it looks, you know, it's, it's re it looks like a, it looks like a, not a painting. It doesn't matter that photographs look like paintings. It's just, it, you know, some people think, well, a photograph should look like a painting that's gonna be worthy, but that's not necessarily, that's not true at all. But it does evoke a painterly quality, I should say. And uh, certainly that along with the luminous qualities is quite enjoyable to look at as a study, as an abstract or still life study. Summer fun, Napa County Fairgrounds. This is pretty interesting capture of somebody upside down on the swinging around on a ride, but so that's just pretty hard to capture those moments. Um, it's very, very interesting and dynamic picture. And it's almost like if when you don't, if you don't look at the people, it's like, is this like t uh, some kind of a toy or something? You know, it looks like that. And then you see the, the human scale in there. And, um, and you know, so you don't, I don't know how you feel about or what your club feels about labels or titles. Um, so I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm of the 
that uh, I take it that I don't necessarily need a title. I look at the picture before I read the title and interpret it that way. And then I'll read the title afterwards. So I'm not from the school of that you need a label or to, to justify the picture. But I do see that it says fairground thing. So then I would see that. But I'm looking at this purely as, you know, colors and forms. And then, I mean, it's obvious I could figure out that it's a ride when I see the people upside down. But anyway, well captured and it's an interesting presentation. I mean, you could easily flip it upside down and it wouldn't be as dynamic. So, uh, of course, the hair is flying down too. So I don't know if I could take that ride or not. <laughs> I'm too old. Um, this is pretty powerful. The gold string. Sorry, this is pretty powerful image. Um, graphically beautiful. Um, you know, I, I talked earlier on about the edges of the frame and certainly on workshops and stuff. I, you know, it's, it's one of those things that most of the time is seems to be the weakest part of pictures as a lack of lack of consideration of edges. And this is a perfect example of well treated edges in terms of having that thin layer of sand at the bottom, moving all the way across the picture space and not awkwardly dropping out. So you have this very subtle base layer, and then you have layers and layers and of course the cloud formation going all the way up. But that silhouette of the pier, that, that inky black punctuation in the picture delineates that whole bottom. And then you have this beautiful uh, light on the clouds from the backlighting of the sun, which introduces a bit of warm color in an otherwise sort of cool, really moody, stormy kind of weather. <clears throat> so atmospheric conditions are definitely like something to is really a gift when you get those um, in terms of photographing that kind of thing. So anyway, I want to just summarize by saying that this is really well designed and um, every square inch of the picture space has a purpose. There's no, no, no elements that take away or compete with the central idea of the image. So excellent image. Okay, we've covered two categories. Only two? <laughs> we got two, two more to go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so we'll take about a five minute break for everyone and then come back and cover the last two. Okay, perfect. And Bill, by the way, I got my speak a microphone working. Okay, great. Did you get Sorry, that resolved with the recording? Yeah, it's, 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 it's recording. Okay. From my side, it's, everything's being recorded. So it's no problem. Okay. So Bill, did you want to do the second half or uh, just let me do the awards? Uh, what would you prefer? Uh, either way, Steve, is fine. I'm, I'm happy to keep on going and then have you do the, the awards. Th that would be fun. Okay. Yeah, get some more tea. Richard, I like what you're saying about the titles. Often in these club uh, events, they put a lot of emphasis on the titles. Mm -hmm. And as you say, at least for myself, I can say when I approach any art, it's um, with my own experiences mm -hmm. and finding my own take on what a photo is and sometimes it works to maybe be told but a lot of times I really appreciate going in blind mm -hmm. because it the, the the words of a title could have an effect on the way you interpret it the same as um knowing what it is may affect your interpretation right mm -hmm. like if if you saw something look like the most amazing sculpture in the world and you found out that it was a crushed Coke can, <laughs> for example, that's an extreme one, but you might think differently about it. But mm -hmm. because you found that out, that changed your thinking. I guess that's maybe kind of an example of that. I think we're too much of a labeled society for like we, you know, it's like there was a comment about tasting the wine and not reading the label. Yeah. 
or you know it's like yeah i guess there's all kinds of examples anyway i think I, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i do and i was told one time years ago that you know i didn't have any imagination because i couldn't I, I was i was this is back when i don't compete i mean this is when i first joined a camera club like 32 years ago and i was always putting things in untitled and there was really ticking them off <laughs> i said don't you have any imagination can't you title something well, I looked at a lot of famous painters and a lot of their art are, are untitled, right? But anyway, I like to be a contrarian. I think but, there's a place for titles, but of course, when that right. becomes what you're looking at, then yeah. you miss the whole point. Yeah, I guess you can you can discuss that in many different ways, right? Like I put I often put quotes on my posts, so maybe I'm doing the wrong thing, but I, I put a quote that from my heart. See, if it's, if it's my image, I have a feeling about it. And if I find a quote that expresses that feeling, then I might put it with it or, you know, that kind of thing. But that's different than titles, but still. Mm -hmm. There is a place for it all. Yeah, I just, yeah. I don't, I, first of all, okay, I guess what I was trying to say was that titles wouldn't influence my, my evaluation or impact of an image. It might further help me later, but I'd want to make the impression first. Yes. <laughs> I'm not very conventional, but still. But I hope that makes sense with the black and white stuff. I mean, it, I, I work with this a lot in, in workshops. And, you know, there's been a few times when I had a person, participant would have have sit down with me and say, I have a lot of, pro I love this, this image, but I have something about it. I can't seem to make it the way I like it. And then I might say, can I try this conversion? And we make a black and white of it. And then we call the rest of the people over and say, what do you think? And again, it's not right or wrong. Right. And it's, it's amazing how, even I'm surprised sometimes a picture can be like 200% better just by cut because color got in the way of one aspect of it. Right. It's like if you photograph the uh, a prime minister and there's a lady with a red hat standing beside the, the, the person, that red hat may draw attention away from the person. You know, it's just a stream example, but that's the kind of thing I'm, I'm saying. So it's really about appropriate or not appropriate. But I, um, yeah, I like that, that mirror with a shadow on the car. I know that, uh, I've just, does anybody have color biases? You mean you must. I don't think I've met anybody without color biases, whether we are aware of it or not, but. I'm partial anyway. to blues and greens. Yeah. You know, I've heard so many people bashing greens and I thought, wait a minute, I said, green, green is nature. Why don't you like green? <laughs> it's funny how these color things go, right? But yeah, it's interesting. Psychology is interesting, very interesting. Definitely. Yeah. And also color is relative too, right? Because, um, you know, two colors can look different together, right? If they, you know, you can do that experiment with, with a sheets of color paper and you can, you can take uh, 10 squares of red and put it on all these different sheets, eight and a half, 11 sheets of different colors. And you'll look at them together and you'll say, those are different reds. But mm -hmm. then you take them off the cards and they're all the same reds. So color is relative as well in, in the way it's interacted. Plus, we how do we know how we see color too, right? How do we know I see color the way you see it? How our camera sees it. Exactly. There's so many interpretations. Yeah, like, you know, the most famous red is probably Coca-Cola, right? It's a <laughs> campaign, which is all over the world. Or the stop sign, right? The stop sign is universal, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's sometimes people can be tricked into to tell you. You can ask people, give them five different reds, and ask them to say which one is that, which one is a stop sign. So it's memory too, right? That's interesting. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but not overthinking it. Just always curious about stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We really appreciate your look at everything. Oh, good. Thanks. Thank you. I always feel like strange about doing a live critique because, you know, um, I always joke with the Marin Club when I used to be there a lot. I mean, when I was, I was doing stuff, I'd always do something with them. And I think, oh my God, the good thing I'm not driving tonight. Maybe my tires will be slashed when I go out. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think you're very equitable. <laughs> Just joking, but yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing to be gained by trashing something, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I go to my camera club once in a while before COVID. And sometimes when I'm, I'm usually traveling a lot, but when, when I'm home, I might pop in and sit in the back. I sit in the back of the room and try and sneak in when nobody knows I'm there. But I feel sometimes I feel really bad when I leave competition night because some of the comments just make me feel awful. And I don't even have any images in the picture, in the thing. <laughs> and I see this the most beautiful images being scored so low. And I'm thinking, oh my God, sometimes I'll shout out, this is an amazing photograph. I just want the like her, the maker to know that. <laughs> and, you know, cause sometimes it can destroy people, right? Um, they give scores here of one to 30, right? And uh, that's their system. Yeah. In so. No, no, this is in, in where I live. And, and oh. uh, but you know, I've heard a lot of complaints all over the world from different places where competition, if it's taken too seriously, it can really affect their, their well being of, you know, photography. But again, you can't take it too seriously. But yeah, I we got rid of the number system a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that's not a very good thing, is it? No. no. So, but I mean, you know, if it's a sharing thing and hopefully you don't get reprimanded for not being conformity, conformist, right? <laughs> so. Definitely not. Yeah, well, that's a good thing, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> screen sharing again. Everybody okay. sees nature, basic, six images. Okay. Let me get my... Here we go. Polistus flavus on Opuntia cactus. Well, you got a lot of pronouncing on this, right? And these, these it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> this is a really interesting category with a good mixture of images. Um, of course, they're all good categories, but um, th so this image, the back, you know, the background is is wonderfully out of focus to really make the. Uh, so whatever that is, <laughs> that insect stand out. I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Um, so that's that's very useful. So it comes down to like isolating and 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 uh, the subject matter. And I think a lot of times selective focus, having a, a sort of nondescript background, allows that animal or insect to stand out. And this is it's well done. I mean, there's small little things that you know that you get in the background that may take away, but um, you know, sometimes in digital, <clears throat> I think that we have the opportunity to really cleanse our images and sometimes they get too sterilized. Um, so, you know, I was just referring to the lighter tones on the bottom left or the, yeah, the left sort of bottom area um, of the cactus needles, but I don't think that's a huge deal. And sometimes you can tone those down as opposed to removing them. But I don't think that it's necessarily a big deal here, but the, definitely the insect is certainly stands out and uh, and the, the technique is really well done, which is a good way to do insects. Okay. This hoverfly or flower fly, Heliophilus intentus, feeds on pollen and nectar. While not as effective as most bees, it is still a valuable pollinator. Specks of pollen can be seen all over its body. This is a really powerful image. Um, another selective focus to really, really highlight the um, the fly and um, certainly wonderful colors around it. And definitely, you know, a lot of nature is to tell a story and, uh, and also if you can do it in an artful way, which is a bonus. So, I mean, this is technically well done and artistically well composed. And um, I see no comments to make on the composition. I think the the use of the frame is 100% utilized, and there's really nothing in the no element in the frame that takes away from that subject part. Preening hooded vulture, Necrocertus monacus, known as Old World vulture, native to Sub-Saharan Africa. You do an amazing job of those those words. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a wonderful image. I, I did when I went back and forth with this and other ones. Um, there, I think it comes down to, and I know you can't always control this, is the lighting. Um, so in the background, right? So 
there's, there's a lot of highlights in the background here. And there's also a lot of contrast with the light itself. So it's a difficult situation for a photographer when you have very bright backgrounds. Um, and, you know, ideally to, to highlight the subject in the frame without those competing, I call them visual hecklers when you have things that compete with a subject. And often it's either color or lightness or certain shapes and something like that. But you can see here where all those light backgrounds. So I was thinking there's one, there's one way to, in processing, to deal with that in that the first thing would be, and not to be repetitive, is if you made this black and white, you would eliminate some of those distractions, not the brightness, but some of those competing elements. And also, if you were to open up the shadow details to get, to compensate for that contrast that was working with in the original lighting situation. But, you know, aside from that, the, the, the stance and the, the way the bird is sitting there is interesting as a story, resting its head into its back. But I think you can, you can you understand what I'm saying about the other parts. And of course, in processing, there's ways of toning things down, but it's always best to try and get it the best you can when you make the capture of the image. And that may mean different lighting. And certainly, I know that in certain situations, you, the photographer can't control their position and so on. And so those are things that you have to work with. <clears throat> okay. Long-tailed weasels, mustelids, den and ground burrows, often using abandoned holes. At five weeks, kits become more active and emerge from holes like this gopher hole to play and learn to hunt. This is a wonderful image design-wise. I love the, um, <laughs> the, the curiosity of, of, these, um, of these weasels. <laughs> I thought they were politicians. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Um, so this is, okay, the quality of light here is different. I mean, I, again, I know you can't control that in, in situations where you're photographing. Um, so the background is out of focus, but you know, if it could be toned down a bit and you can do that in processing by slightly darkening the edges. Um, I know it's just important to have color on the fur here is for identification. So, you know, the black and white thing wouldn't necessarily work there, but you can, you can tone down a little bit of backgrounds and, you know, you can, I know it's, it's nature and you shouldn't monkey with it, but, uh, you know, a couple of those highlights on the grasses could be toned down. I don't think that's a tragedy to do that <clears throat> because, you know, what's the difference if you did, if you tone those down or clone those out, there's no difference between that and actually walking up and picking them up with your hand. Um, so those are just little things. I just want to make you aware of those things. But the design and the story is wonderful, very much. Okay. Mesquite bug, Thosis neocalifornicus at Colossal Cave, Arizona. This is superb um, capture here of a story, you know, nature story and uh, really well executed in terms of the quality of light, the softness of the light. And, you know, design wise, I mean, the orientation, the, um, the oblique orientation of, the, of the, the bug itself in the picture space is a very nice dynamic position. And it's a pure nature story, but, you know, very expressively uh, done. And the framing the scale and so on is quite nice. And, you know, that background is, it's a beautiful, there's, there's nothing in the background to compete with the subject. So you can very much focus in on it. And it's just wonderfully sharp and, and good detail there. So overall, really well uh, done image. Common Buckeye, Junonia coenia on a white straw flower. I think this is really well done as well. And, and you know, it's, it's another one of those things with contrast, right? And the previous image was soft light. This is very harsh light however it has beautiful texture on the white flower but there's this thing about um competition with the with the viewer in terms of the moth the moth is is so wonderful the the wing pattern 
And um, so we have a full circle of a white flower and the white flower is very, very bright. So it's, it's got competition with it. And I know it's good to have context and environment to tell a story in nature. <clears throat> but um, I'm wondering if, um, if you, when you, when you cut something off, this is like a little design idea, but when, when you're framing something or, you know, every time we point our camera, we're cutting something off because we can't get the whole world in our frame. So we decide where those, those frames cut subject. I'm wondering if this could be strengthened by making it into a square, whereas you clip the bottom of that, that white circle of flower. So if you could, you know, hold your hand up there to see that. So you have, if you do it back and forth, you can see you have more strength on the, on the moth or the butterfly. So it's something to think about. I want you to think about that. So um, I think that even though there's wonderful background there with the red flower and everything else, I think if you, if you made a square out of this using the hundred percent of the horizontal dimension, and making the square so that it, it cuts off the circle of the white flower. I think you would redirect the attention to the to moth itself. That's just an idea. And until you actually do it, you, you can't tell, but it's nice exercise to try or think about that in terms of um, the expressive direction of your attention. So that's an idea, but it's a wonderful image. Intermediate, four images. On alert, this male North American grizzly bear, Ursus arctocerebralis, surveys his habitat for competing males. Note his characteristic shoulder hump, short round ears, and long nose. Well, this, is, this is a beautiful image. Um, I mean, look at the, the detail in the fur, the detail in the grass, especially in the foreground, this is wonderful. And um, this, you know, the habitat, the environment, context, and so on, does tell a great story, a nature story. Um, yeah, no, no issues really. Um, it's just well, well done. Leaf barnacles, polysipes, poly, poly, polymerus, and California mussels, Michaelis californianus, both thrive in the pounding surf where they attach to rocks. Here they're exposed by a low tide. This is beautiful. This is a night. This is a great example of a nature story that is very artful in its execution. Um, the contrast between the light and the dark, and the position of those light shapes within the dark shapes in the picture space is wonderfully designed. So you know you can. Um, you can tell wonderful nature stories with very artful compositions. And um, this is very successful in that. that uh, and I think, you know, that contrast is a nice, a nice, uh, a nice touch to it as well. Yeah, I have no issues with that. Sparring African bush elephants, Loxodonta africana. Young bulls develop their fighting skills by defending their mud hole on a hot summer day. The cooling mud is the prize. Sambona, South Africa. This is the wonderful image. What a capture a moment in time. Um, fantastic. Um, I know it's, this is important, um, important to have an important image to have in color to tell the story. It would also be interesting in black and white if it was processed in such a way that you had some structure in the processing, i.e. a little bit of a gritty contrast in the black and white. And I'm only saying that, and you know, it could be a comparison, but I'm only saying that because the background environment, although it does tell a story, is a very similar um, color to the elephants themselves. And um, I'm wondering if, uh, get more texture in the elephant skin and stuff like that. So it might be an interesting uh, contrast. I did see a, I was looking at an entire book of photography of, of uh, wildlife in Africa, all in black and white. And it was really intriguing to, uh, the textures are really intriguing. So it's something that we make you think about. Beautiful composition, great moment in time, fantastic capture. 
um, it might be interesting to experiment. I don't want to make this all about black and white and color, but I want you to think about that stuff because photography does have those two expressive qualities about, uh, you know, black and white and color. So, um, yeah, anyway, this is a wonderful image. <clears throat> Great white egret in bleeding in breeding plumage brings a twig to the nest at the Ninth Street Rookery. This superb image, just fantastic design. I mean, the gracefulness, the position, the twig in the, in the mouth, it's just <clears throat> amazing uh, capture. And I, I even love that little bit of foliage in the bottom, just to give it con connection. I think that very, very much strengthens the story to know it's not just high up in the sky and um relating to the you know relating to the nest so uh i can't say enough about this it's really wonderful major advanced five images <clears throat> the phony forms as the splash and spray of the ocean rinses rock surfaces physical weathering removes the loosened grains to create the lacy box-like texture on the sandstone along cliff faces this is a wonderful intimate landscape. Um, I'm a big component, a big, uh, so I celebrate the small scenes in landscape. And um, this, is, this is one example of like those barnacles and so on of wonderful studies of closer parts of the land. And this is well designed because, you know, a few, I always try and help people in workshops about abstracting the shapes and arranging those shapes and lines in the picture space. And you can, can you see the shape of that textured part? It kind of swoops down towards from the upper middle to the lower left. Is that wonderful shape pushing down and that, that combined with other components that are similar, give the whole thing continuity and does, and tells a story too, because it's completely focused. So this is a wonderful image and um, it's wonderful to see people doing smaller scenes or more intimate landscape scenes within as opposed to just the big ones too they're both valid and it's nice to sometimes people overlook the smaller things so this is great puffins of alaska sequence one of three two of three species of puffin are found in alaska this horn puffin for turkula cornaculata is seen near coasts in the Northern Pacific Ocean and is the most co common. I'll go through all three and then bring it back to, this, to the beginning. The tufted puffin Fraterticula cirrata also lives and breeds in the North Pacific. Its breeding plumage includes light colored tufts that extend above their ears. The rhinoceros alclet Cirrorhynchia monocerata is a close relative of puffins and is sometimes called rhinoceros puffin. The horn is only present in breeding adults. Well, this is a superb series, both technically and artistically. Um, this is this portrait here is just phenomenal. Um, the position, the shape, the relationship in the frame. And, you know, obviously it goes without saying you need focus, but this is extra good focus. And, um, yeah, very, very high quality. So it's very, very good series. And there's a lot, there's a lot of nice series in nature stuff here. And this is also amazing the way the shapes go, you know, the shapes of the rocks, everything folds together and interacts together and just really well done. And again, that, that portrait as well with the, the sharpness and the nice, wonderful background so fantastic the sequence of three vulture hierarchy turkey vultures follow a strict hierarchy with the alpha male getting to feed first until the stomach is full another male joins the feed on this seal carcass feeding is interrupted as the interloping bird confronts the feeding alpha male with spread wings a forward step and eye contact to challenge his dominance Dominance established, the new alpha male feeds on the seal at the prime opening, while the former alpha male can only wait his turn to resume feeding. This is a wonderful series too, great storytelling. 
<clears throat> it sucks to be a seal. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yes. look at, I mean, okay, look at this image, the, the wings, the wings spread up, you know, in, in terms of design, I mean, obviously, this is a great series and a great storytelling nature thing. But artistically speaking, you know, looking at the shapes, the interaction of these shapes is also uh, wonderful as well. And no, nothing to compete with the, with the story, you know, the background is fairly clean. There's nothing taking, there's nothing distracting you from the actual subject. So I love the wings here up, you know, spread up on the, especially the bird on, you know, the top or the upper or left side. And again, here, probably the same bird, but it's, um, yeah, that's a nice tighter scene as well. So a great story. And I mean, sometimes it, it's important especially maybe not necessarily just in nature, but sequences are a wonderful way to tell a story with photography and um, just certainly really well done. Yeah. Male Longhorn Bee. Eucerini melissides sleeps in a flower. The solitary males don't share a nest with females and can be found tucked away in the early morning hours before temperatures warm. Another, I mean, this is important how the focus focuses, draws attention and to the, you know, obviously because they're optically designed that way. Um, so, you know, definitely your eye goes to that beautifully focused um, uh, bee. And, you know, the, st the story is also a great nature story. And um, the background is very artistic in terms of the area of green and the flower itself. So um, beautifully designed and, and a very strong uh, nature story as well. It's nice to see Oops, that sorry. happen. Oh. Sorry. It's nice to see that in nature where you can, you can still have the artistic license and composition and also tell a true story in nature as well. Gray wolves, Canis lupus are social animals and often exhibit mutual grooming behavior. Fantastic story. And uh, I, I'm impressed with all the focus. And, uh, you know, in terms of design, I mean, look at how your eye goes from the, um, <clears throat> the, the wolf on the uh, upper, or the wolf on the right-hand side. So you come from the right, go over, and then the other wolf, the darker one, goes down and then down to the bottom wolf. So you have this circular circular uh, pattern of the eye movement, for me anyway. And that's part of that structure, the backbone of the design of the image. And it's not easy to do it in a situation like this, where I'm sure they're always moving, but it has this wonderful, wonderful composition. And, and at the same time, it's a, it's a great story in nature. So um, very, very good. And uh, having that all focused is wonderful to uh, tie the story together. <clears throat> Master's level. Sequence of four, tree swallow mating. During the mating process, the males perform flutter flight and bow displays in front of the females. Tree swallows may be seen billing. This is the practice of a mating pair touching bills with one another. During copulation, the male hovers over the female, then mounts her, giving ticking calls. The male lands on the female's back, grabs her head, feathers, pivots his tail under hers, and transfers his sperm in what is known as a cloacal kiss. This is a great series and a story as well. This first image is fantastic art, artful image in that look at the background and the position of the bird's wing and the connection and relationship between the two. So, I mean, fantastic story and fantastic composition and not always, not easy when you have something moving like this. So it's um, excellent uh, skill. And of course, this as well, the wing, the spread wings, the shape of the spread wings in conjunction with the branch, that goes back to that relationship too, again. 
and just all part of that sequence of story, right? Within the same sort of similar compositions. Fantastic series. Climate change, low tides coupled with intense heat waves jeopardize shore wildlife. Recent reports found exposed low tide sea life actually cooked due to heat exposure at over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, when I first looked at this image, I, uh, as I mentioned before, I, I didn't read any captions till I, I, till I went back the second time. I was just looking for visual memories of things. And uh, this, this, one, this one really stood out to me as a unique nature story. And um, it just, you know, the relationship between the foreground and the background, the context of the, of the, of the seaside, um and and you know the distribution of these colors of in, in within the picture i mean it's it's a nature focused image it's also extremely artful um in a unique way that i don't often see and uh then after going back again and reading the caption and that and it's um even more powerful because at this time right now it's it's brutal uh things are happening at a rapid t speed of changes. And um, yeah, but that that didn't affect my initial impact on in terms of photography and the artful aspect of it. So as a nature story, it's a phenomenal image and uh, something that is very different than I usually would see. So I, I give this high, high regards. This image is very high on my list of images. <clears throat> The wings of the Galapagos cormorant, Phalacorex heresy, have evolved to support fast underwater swimming. On an island with no natural predators, flight is a low priority. Fantastic image. Um, I just am impressed with the detail and the, and the shadows of the bird's head and the neck, the sharpness, and you know, the sea behind with the waves. It's, it's textural but not, not competing at all with the sharpness of the bird itself and that beautiful tonality in, in those shadows. Um, just wonderful and um, a really, really wonderful image. I have no issues with the composition, it's fantastic. Sea lion caves of Oregon are the only known mainland rookery and hauling area, wintery mm -hmm. home of the stellar sea lion and the California sea lion. This is a great story as well, and, and also a great design. You know, the relationship between the sea lions and that moment of capture of the upper one that's making the noise, even though it's a still image, it's, 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 um, you can get that feeling of if it was a video. <clears throat> so once again, another nature story that's well designed, artfully designed, and uh, and and with a good, strong story as well. Yeah. Osprey family <clears throat> sequence of four. Early morning at the osprey nest, as three fledglings patiently wait for an adult to bring food. One sibling tests out its wings as it learns to fly, while the other two is observe intently. The adult female on the right has returned to the nest and the adult male flies in with a fish in his talons for the morning meal. The adult female teaches the fledglings how to tear off bits of fish as she feeds one while the others watch and learn. Well, another, another great series and amazingly sharp. Um, um, this is, again, look at the background, the background um, really makes the, the birds stand, stand out, the osprey stand out in contrast and um, a beautiful story right there. <clears throat> and this, the, the relationship, I already talked about relationship and el of elements in a picture space. Look at the relationship between these shapes and um, yeah, just amazing um, timing, that moment in time which is a great skill. And also here as well, beautiful shape as well of the, of the, of the wings with the fish. So fantastic. 
fantastic artful images and story as well. So quite a few interesting series amongst this group. <clears throat> a gerinuk stands on its hind feet, stretching its neck to feed from, from tall thorny acacia trees. Commonly called giraffe antelope or giraffe gazelle, they're found in East Africa, little cranius waleri. Fantastic. I mean, the story is phenomenal here. Um, the composition, fantastic. Um, the moment in time, the story from this feeding is, is just beautiful. Um, everything, you know, technically and uh, compositionally comes together. So bravo to the photographer. Okay. Then we go to travel category. Mm -hmm. Basic, one image. Aurora over Fairbanks, Alaska. Wonderful image. So it's, it's wonderful to see the aurora and the, the effects of that light streaming over the sky. Beautifully executed. Um, no issues with the composition. Maybe if you want to make a small point, the very bottom part um, of light looks like snow or light tones. That's a small point along the bottom part. It'd be nice to have that anchored in the silhouetted trees. That's about that edge thing again, that little edges, the edge thing. But nice feeling overall. Intermediate, three images. Kemp's Bay, South Africa is a small beach community on the Atlantic seaboard near Cape Town with plush condos, white sand beaches, and stunning views of the 12 Apostles mountain range. Well, it's a well-executed image. I mean, it's nice information, the sweep of the shoreline, the relationship and context between the mountains and the resort. It's quite a lovely composition. Packing in the High Sierra. This is an interesting story in this and the hikers at their scale, their, their scale shows the immense landscape and um, they certainly don't dominate the picture. It's interesting how the elements, the slight pathway leading to them and the elements of cloud rock and a partial tree, it looks like. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, overall, I mean, the composition is well, well composed and uh, it does tell a nice story of travel. Always completely booked, the vibrant mini glacier hotel offers guests world-class views from its rooms, restaurant and bar. There are many common areas and a large deck for mingling or relaxing. Well, it's a beautiful composition and um, the context is, is fantastic setting here with these mountains. I can see why it must be always booked, <laughs> but it's yeah. definitely uh, spectacular views there. And uh, so it's just well executed composition. I don't have any issues with that. All events, six images. Brooks River in Katmai National Park, Alaska is a popular fishing spot for both humans and brown bears. The bears use far less equipment than the humans. Well, this is an interesting story and I like the format of the framing of this, the very elongated panoramic shape. Um, definitely interesting uh, story between people fishing and the wildlife fishing. And I don't know if I'd want to be that close to, to bears, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very interesting story here and, and certainly intriguing travel shot. I like the use of format. It's kind of, it, it's, it suits, it suits that uh, storyline very well. The freestanding monoliths of the upper Cathedral Valley were carved by deep erosion of Entrada sandstone, originally deposited as sandy mud and on tidal flat, Capitol Reef National Park, Utah. That's a beautiful image. I'm wondering if, um, the foreground, the foreground is dark compared to the middle or to background. <clears throat> I'm wondering if, if, um, 
if that foreground could be lightened or the tonality in the upper part could meet that. I know there's probably shadows cast forward from cloud formations. The other thing is possibly um, would a different format shape, um, i.e. meaning making it more panoramic, excluding a bit of the bottom part of the foreground. Although if that's important to the story, you know, those those edges along the, uh, the create these lines at the bottom. And if that's the case, then, you know, making the exposure a little bit brighter, it's just that the contrast between the darker bottom and the lighter top could be either modified and or framed into a different, uh, more linear, not necessarily panoramic, but less um, less bottom. So that's my take on that. It's beautiful landscape. Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park. West Minton Butte is one of the many sandstone masterpieces that tower at 400 to 1,000 feet. The park's beauty is overwhelming with its magnificent colors and shapes. Certainly a classic subject um, and beautiful. It's beautiful light here and the cloud, fortunate to have all these, these clouds and, uh, and textural light. So while composed, I'd have no issues with that. And uh, I think it's really well done. It's, it's interesting to have that design with the clouds. The clouds really add interest to uh, relationship between the, the butte itself. Into the gardeners tend their floating gardens on the inland lake in the Shan Stay of Myanmar. The bamboo poles anchor the gardens to the lake bottom. I think this is a fantastic travel story. Um, in terms of design, the composition is wonderful. Um, in terms of framing, I don't see any distractions that take away from the subject. And I particularly think it's nice to have that relationship or juxtaposition between the, uh, the two farmers, um, left to right. Certainly the dominant one is in the right-hand side, <coughs> but it's nice to have that extra relationship stepping back within the frame of the story. And um, so that's, that's pretty powerful. And I think this is a great image, great composition. Cathedral Notre Dame de Paris before the devastating fire of 2019. Restoration is expected to be completed in 2024. Well, it's a fantastic image. It, um, it's got um, that extreme feeling of height and that wonderful warm color mixing with the cool, which the color from the inside lights mixing with the daylight through the windows is a, a very wonderful, um, cool, warm contrast. But in terms of structure, I love that structure. Um, the design itself has a great, uh, great sense of height and uh, reputation. So it has a lot of impact and uh, it's a very good image. A good pasture covered bridge spans the Mackenzie River in Lane County, Oregon. At 165 feet, it is the second longest covered bridge in the state. It's an interesting travel shot as well. Um, um, I'm just wondering if it, I'm not one of these people that would say you need something else, but I'm wondering if it would benefit from another element. But again, that's a matter of. You can't manufacture that stuff. It's more about um, scale. So that's my 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 thought on that. I mean, it's a really interesting bridge, and um, it's you could probably also. Pro I mean, the, the texture is beautiful too. The light the light and texture is wonderful as well on the siding of the bridge, which gives that delineation and, and shadow highlight. My own co my only comment is it's really well done. But my only comment is <clears throat> if um, if it would benefit from an element of scale, and that could be, but not not something that's forced because I don't believe in forcing something into a picture. But and like I said before, it's not easy for a photographer to just have something magically happen for them. But I'm just I'm just asking that question about. Another, another element to um, 
in this picture, in this composition. Okay. Rebel Masters, six images. Chenny Chain Bridge spans the river Danube between Buddha and Pest, the western and eastern sides of the Budapest. It leads tourists to the Castle Hill funicular in Buddha Castle. Okay, as a as a travel photograph, I'm 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 looking. Okay, think about the the story and the elements and um, the the people in the people in the foreground, the closest to us, overlapping with the other people going beyond. So I'm just wondering where the story is in terms of what we're focusing on so less it's a really an interesting image i'm just unclear about the photographer's intent so um yeah that's that's my comment there um it's not always easy to um i mean ideally it might be nice to to get out in the middle of the road but you can't do that <laughs> but um you know looking through the bridge in a perspective way I'm just looking at elements that confuse visually, and that's what I'm thinking about there. So I'm not, not um, knowing what to focus on. So that's my comments there. Students learning wood carving in Bhutan at the School of 13 Arts and Crafts, a six year course of study to perfect their traditional craft. This is a great composition. Um, the perspective, the vanishing point, reputation and uh definitely a, tra a travel story with with these people all these artists working on their on their crafts and um yeah so i think that's great no issue there and that also would be don't want to be that be his death but that would be a fantastic black and white image too 2019 wildflower super bloom at carrizo plain national monument Go for the splendid carpets of color and texture on overlapping Temblor Range mountain slopes. Stay for the eye-catching abstract art you create. Wonderful. I love these wonderful overlapping forms as they undulate back and forth from the bottom to the top with little punctuations of color, even the contrasting orange at the top. So wonderful um, abstract qualities. Love the shapes and repetition the overlapping shapes as well. So uh, very good, very good image. Aging captive golden eagle next to an ovu, a roadside shrine covered with colored scarves. Blue symbolizes the Mongolian open sky, Yulan Batar. R wonderful impact. Certainly having the, uh, having the eagle looking right at you and it's so in focus that it has a very strong impact of that. And then the background being out of focus is not competing with that, but it provides a nice uh, context to the image. So it's a very striking image. Even the shadow of the bird's beak on its neck has a very three-dimensional quality to it. So um, there's a lot of impact here for those various reasons. Feeding food pellets to rare Rothschild, Rothschild giraffe from the upper decks of the giraffe center is very popular on the tourist circuit and will raise as much needed funds to save the species, Nairobi, Kenya. Well, this is a fantastic story, fantastic composition. The relationship uh, is always, it's, it's nice to have relationship in a, in a design and uh that moment in time that precise moment it would be different if the tongue of, wasn't out the giraffe but it's that precise moment that's the um that's the creativity and the skill to capture that moment in time which is happens so quickly and even having the bird or the, having the eye of the um the giraffe frame within one of the squares is a bonus all that stuff is spontaneity and sometimes luck too as well. But uh, pre-planning is certainly useful when seeing the potential of something happening like that. 
So uh, I think this is outstanding uh, composition. And um, so I, I applaud the photographer for that. The road from Banff to Jasper draws photographers from all over, all over the world. It's a very, very strong image. Um, you know, this, sometimes I can hear voices about, you know, people looking at this and say, well, it needs scale, but, and I don't, I did mention, I know I did mention that in the previous, some previous images. However, I don't think this one needs scale. I don't think it can, I think it can be, it can stand alone without having a point of interest in it. It wouldn't take it take away from it, but I don't think it needs it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes wilderness spaces don't always have to have humans imposing on them. So having said all that, um, I think this is fine exactly the way it is. It's extremely rich in tonality and powerfully has a powerful sense of depth as well. So I think this is extremely well executed image and um, certainly has a high impact uh, for me. We have two images that are non-competitive uh, for your uh, critique. Lesser known extinction event. So I just got to ask you about what's that mean? Um, it doesn't affect the, the way I evaluate them, but what does it mean non-competitive? It means they're not in the competition for an award. They're oh, just I looking see. for critique from you. Oh, okay. Well, the, there you go. About the image. There you go. This is pretty interesting and it's kind of comical. Um, yeah, I mean, okay, in terms of design, fantastic. You know, the background is very clean and it's got variations of, uh, of tonality and hue. Um, the design works really well. It's very comical when you read the title and then see that uh, little skeleton. That's it's pretty interesting. So I have no issues with that. It's a very good image. Social distancing. Also, this is one of those images where the title where the title works with it in terms of this is where, where it's appropriate to have a title, I should say. Um, interesting design. Um, I think that having the different people is very interesting concept, right? But the having the people all sliced off against the darkness would benefit from having a variety of different punctuations of the people coming out of whatever they're in, in terms of like liquid or something like that, as a suggestion that they were doing. So, yeah, so it's interesting, interesting composition. So, and the concept is, is quite, quite funny in this times that we're in. So there, that's what I have to say with that. Okay, so, so we've covered those categories. We'll, we'll take another five, five minute break. And okay. then Steve will come back and display the uh, winners. And, the uh, members can make brief comments on each, each of their uh, winning images. You must be tired of hearing me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not yet. Not at it's all. it's eleven thirty here. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I'm only teasing you, yeah, but it's, yeah, we're th I'm three hours ahead of you guys. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your insights. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. I hope it makes sense. Thank you sense. for staying up late. <laughs> well, I'm up late anyway. <laughs> but I'm a night hawk and an early morning person. That doesn't work very well. Oh, I understand. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sometimes it's it's difficult. I mean, it's this is about about uh, roughly 100 images or 96 something like that. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to That's keep the brain lot. working that long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I made sense anyway. But, you know, on all seriousness, I think it's great to, no matter what level you are, it's great to keep experimenting because if you, if you stop learning, then you're finished. Yeah. If you, if someone thinks they're an expert, then that's where they fin that's where they're going to plateau. Right? Yeah. yeah. So even though I've got 30 some years experience and I live and breathe images, 
I'm constantly learning new things and trying new things. My father had an expression called, if you see the Buddha, shoot him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, it's, you know, I, you know, I used to, um, I, I've been in film, viewing film for so long. And I, when I started out, I was uh, 35 millimeter cameras with slide film and, and black and white negatives and developed my own negatives and so on in the dark room. But I used to shoot in two and a quarter square camera too. And I love the square format. And I love the two thirds format too. And then, and then I got a four by five camera and I played with that. And you know, medium format as well. And I, that's an interesting shape as well, the four by five shape. But then pr primarily I was two thirds, you know, 35 millimeter. And then I start thinking about other shapes, right? Because painters and that can choose a canvas any size they like for the most part. So we shouldn't have to be restricted to certain formats. But uh, so I'm, I'm a big advocate of experimenting with shapes but primarily keep it to, I rediscovered with my phone years ago that I can shoot square images. And it reminded me how much I love square. So, and I didn't even know when I bought my Nikon Z7, honestly, I didn't even know it had formats. I just bought it because I needed a camera and I needed to replace my old 850. So to my delight, I discovered it has, with one touch my thumb on the back of the thing, I can, I can touch my, very quickly, I can change from the normal format to a square, to a panoramic. So I'm, I'm using square a lot too. And, um, but I like to experiment with the shapes within those appropriate, uh, you know, things. So that, you know, that, that one with the dog's tracks on the sand, I would love to see what that looks like if you sh keep to the right side and make it, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so that the, the dog's tracks would come up and then you would see the dog and then you would go over to the island. Mm -hmm. But you never know till you have a thought like that, but you try to say, oh, it doesn't work, but you don't know until you try it. What camera do you use it now? What camera do I use? Yeah. I use the Nikon Z7, which is... Oh, okay. It's a mirrorless. Yeah. yeah and, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm six foot three and I can reach pretty high. And I, I, I've been using my 24 millimeter with my hands over my head shooting down and uh, onto streams and looking at patterns where I can't have a step ladder. I don't carry a step ladder, obviously, but so I've been discovering I can reach high and use a flip screen and then compose. So I kind of, I used to do that with my phone as well. I do that because I reach into places I can't uh, get. Anyway, those are tools. It doesn't mean it makes me a better, no, no camera can ever make yeah. me a better photographer. So that's the biggest m misconception some people have. It's irrelevant. If you, you, you're only as good as your vision. So the tools are just you know, a little bit of help with it. Now, do you find the use of full uh, 45 megapixels that camera's got, right? I do. Uh, compared yes, to yeah. the 24 that the smaller one has. I'm yeah, kind of in a self debate about that, you know, you trying know to, if I yeah. want to spend the extra for it. You know what? The only reason that I got the Z7 be, because I wanted to um, keep my equipment simple and I can, I can use a 300 millimeter on my Z7 and I can, with two buttons, I can have F FX. So I can have the, the smaller version you just talked about, like the, like the Z6, for example, you know, whatever it is, 24 megapixels or half of that. Um, so now I can have a, a 450 millimeter lens with my, so if I carry the two lenses, 2470 and 70 to 300, I can go to DX and have that extra without carrying a 400 millimeter lens. Uh, anyway, that's my thinking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just kind of having that inner debate, you know, whether it's I want to spend the extra when I when I move up, you know, and well, future you don't, or not. You don't need 50 megapixels. You don't need. It depends on what you're doing, but you know, Topaz. A friend of mine was playing around with Topaz um, gigapixel or something like that, and it's unbelievable. He's taking. He's had a print of a shot from his iPhone that he made a. Oh, I change it and see if anyone notices. Question. A forty-eight inch print. So uh -huh. yeah, so it's interesting what technology we have, but you have to start with a good file, though. You can't make a. 
something out of a bad file, no matter what software you have. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah keep how many sharp. people make 60 inch prints really? I mean, not many. Yeah. I don't make many, but. Yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> so maybe it's all useless pixels. Yeah, or a good crop. If you want to crop them later. So. Well, then, okay, that's the other thing. If you, I, I'm not in the habit of cropping much um, because I've spent my most of my life being exact with my slide film and my tripod and everything. So I can't get out of that out of my head, but I don't rely on cropping. But so I don't need that part of it. But I, like I said, I can, I can get a little extra focal length out of my larger one. Anyway, that's just technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, are we all set to go? We are. Okay. And let me bring up the screen. Let's see. Oh, I didn't share my screen yet. One moment. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Creative Basic, two images. And I have to get my other screen. Second place, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, I really learned a lot tonight. Thank you. I, I really liked your comments. And the second comment I have is I really am impressed with all the photos I saw from our, our club. It's everyone set a really high bar. So um, this is just what it is. A fly landed on a mesh sort of table outdoors. I was at a really cool place called uh, uh, Butte Gardens in Salt Lake City and uh, just started playing around with negative imagery on it. So Very effective. Nice treatment. It's a fascinating Great. image. Thank you. Congratulations. First Thanks. place. Laura. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, yeah, I hadn't been in the city in a while, and I know uh, lens balls can be a little gimmicky. I'd only used it once before, but I just thought that was going to be kind of a interesting um, subject to put in the ball. So thank you. I don't think you use it in a gimmicky way, though. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, so it's looks like it thing. belongs there. Yeah, <laughs> We're looking at the future. <laughs> That's a cool image. Mm -hmm, it is. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh. Creative Intermediate, four images. Honorable mention, Sherry. Oh, thank you. I'd taken this um, just as a setup shot, and I was trying different lenses, and that was some years ago, and I was going back calling images, and I just like the graphic quality of this, so I, I played with it a bit. Thank you. Very simple Welcome and nice. Mm -hmm. Nice treatment. Congratulations. Third place, Greg. <laughs> and I don't think he's here tonight, or is he? Greg isn't here. Oh, very nice. Hmm. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, He's cool. not here. Okay. It's a Congratulations to Greg. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's not here either. Oh. Oh. Wish I'd seen this. I'd like to know how she did this. No, yeah. Not here, Steve. It just dawns on me. It reminds me of the Rolling Stones or something now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Tongue, though. I never thought that before. I just know. It's funny how you look at something different times, it becomes different. 
Congratulations to Pat. Third place. I'm sorry. First place. Ronnie. Oh, uh, beauty. Well, thank you. Um, I have to thank Tony for this, even though he's not here, because originally this was turned to the right and it was more horizontal. And uh, he thought it would look better like this, and he was right. So it's more <laughs> dynamic, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Thank you. Good, Ronnie. You can see that, um, I hope that most people think about that, that the orientation in the picture space can make something stronger and stronger, especially in this dynamic position, right? So, For sure. Yeah. Especially because I originally had it titled something about flashlight and mm -hmm. it what's, made sense. What's those lines from? There's luminous lines. So uh, there, uh, it's a motion, uh, it's a motion filter um, right. from Topaz Studio 2. It's, uh, it's interesting. I don't remember yeah, which nice. one it is. It doesn't matter. It's just what it, it's nice. And, you know, I always say that it doesn't matter how you make the picture. The fact that you made it is important. Yeah. 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 I did a lot. Of, I fooled around with it for a while. That's good. <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Very nice. Well done, Ryan. Congratulations. <laughs> Creative Advanced. Four images. Honorable mention. Tara. Tara. Is she here? No. Not here. Um, Glad she Not entered, here. though. Yeah. It looks like a watercolor painting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you use the white paper as, as shape. I wish she was here to say. Yeah. With Tara, with Tara, it's probably some mold or something. She's so great at taking things. Yep. Yeah. You're right about that. It's <laughs> macro. A vegetable slice. Who knows? Yeah. It's, a, it's an eggplant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that could be. Love the green. Could be an aerial beach shot, even. <laughs> yeah. Close well, the whole, or bioluminescent. Well, that's the whole thing about abstract. It can be the viewer can interpret all kinds of things. That's yeah. why naming is titling is so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hardest time. Untitled is great. <laughs> <laughs> they don't yeah. allow it. I never said it allowed. Empress won't yeah. allow it. So we get, I get around it other ways. Yeah. Oh, damn. Dot dot dot. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> dot, dot. dot. <laughs> <laughs> Done that. Because look at the phone book and try Third place. Linda. Mm. Oh, nice. Oh. Very nice. Like that, Linda. Thank you. I want to thank you, Richard, for all the amazing comments that you've made about all the, the pictures. But this was just like you said, just sort of was close in and zoomed out and a um, little, little topaz added to it. But it's beautiful tones and yeah. yeah. Nice to be able to watch it. Fills the frame. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, that's good. Nice. Congratulations. Second place. Steve. <laughs> 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 Thanks. This was uh, something that, you know, obviously started out with a bird reflection. And then I looked at it and I just saw all these graphic and reflective, you know, possibilities for reflection. And, and it, then I added some color to it. And I really liked the way it looked. At first, I called it the uh, Portuguese duck of war because it kind of looks like a Portuguese man of war down at <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, struggled with the, the name. Uh, Steve, is it a reverse montage? Uh, it's, it's a reflection. Oh, it's just okay. a reflection. And um, I did a lot of uh, like cleaning okay. up and eliminating some of the reflection portions of it. Oh, OK. Trying to clean it up a little bit and make it not be so distracting. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make it just as balanced as I could, mainly by just getting rid of uh, like some of the dark reflections in the water 
Mm -hmm. um, and then try to balance it out between left and right, because obviously, you know, the reflection is going to be a little darker, a little lighter. So mm -hmm. I just tried to balance it out so that it turned into something graphic and was not really a reflection you know, anymore. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, an old woman with big red lips. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. a <laughs> <laughs> COVID, the beard. COVID yep. hair. With the eyes. <laughs> that's that's black funny. COVID hair. Thanks. I, I wasn't going to put this in. I, in all honesty, um, uh, my work has gotten to the point, uh, and I, I pulled my Achilles tendon. I have just barely functional for quite some time. So I haven't really been able to go out and do much photography. So I'm just like, let's just take some old images. And since things are getting the busiest season at my work, I said, I just took three images and put them in and said, that's probably all I'll do for the rest of the of the year since I'm doing mm -hmm. fairly well as it is. So I just kind of had a little bit of fun. This one, I just stuck in as it was. Didn't think mm -hmm. I would, you know, maybe I'd place or something, but I wasn't looking for a best of show. And I just said, I want to share some images that were fun that I enjoyed and see what mm -hmm. happens. So, so it was nice to kind of let go a little bit. And Good to see. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Tricia. Yay! Yay. Thank you. <laughs> I knew. Um, thank you so much. Like this. this is um. There's a place in Petaluma that I go back to again and again and again to photograph the, these nets that blow in the wind, and um, mm. Mm. I just love them. They're they're to protect from the the freeway from golf balls, but yep. I see so much else in them, and I love photographing them. And this was a composite, for probably pretty obviously. Um, just mm. merging the two sides together. But um, mm. at first I saw a kimono and yeah. then it's like, well, if it's a kimono, it's kind of messed up. So I gave it the title Tattered instead. Thanks a lot. Beautiful. Well, graphic. Well, very nice, Trisha. Very cool. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well seen. Thanks. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Mm. Creative Masters, five images. Me. <laughs> this was uh, trying to be evocative of a sort of dry oil paint. Being thick, it doesn't um, transmit a lot of detail, but also in terms of subject, when you're deep in a kiss, uh, everything around you tends to sort of fade out and not be in focus. Uh, but, but that's kind of subtle. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, I used a software called Studio Artist. And um, since you do a lot of film, um, this is a tool that incorporates still photography and film and artistic uh, brushworks mm -hmm. uh, on images. And you can, for example, define a brush and use as paint for the brush, you can import a movie clip and use the movie clip to paint onto the screen. Right. Uh, it's an incredibly complex tool. Mm. And you'll see some more of it uh, in the next image. Hmm. which is honorable mention to me also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, Steve. Yeah, this uh, is really cool. It's this a very is different, great. different very. approach too, right? Awesome. Yeah. This, this also uses, this uses a different kind of brush. And there are an incredible number of parameters when you define a brush. And this hmm. particular one, um, takes the pixels underneath the brush and does this kind of transforming it into sort of lines that swirl. And so painting over this guy's tattoos uh, in different directions 
uh, brings out all these different kinds of swirls. Mm -hmm. And then uh, also used um, luminar to amplify the color contrast. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it was a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. Came out great. Yeah, very good. I like it a lot, Steve. Yeah, it's a great photo. Super. Very graphic. Third place, Anne. Ah. Yay. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty much out of the camera. I made a few little tweaks, but it's just one image. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't use uh, Steve's program with the brushes or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did you move your camera? Yeah, I moved it. Yeah. Definitely, I moved it. Yeah, it's multiple exposure, right? No. Oh, it's not? It's Where is closer, it? but I moved. S slow shutter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Half a second. Yeah, I moved, and I think Half I uh, yeah rotated the lens also. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that is the spinny kind of yeah. look. Oh, yeah, it was a fanning. Yeah. Very cool. Which Sneezing and rotating. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> Thank you, Richard, very much. I appreciate all your time. Love the color color. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Second place. Tony. Oh. Oh. All right. That is really very cool. Cool. Maybe something. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. It is beautiful. I love it a lot. Perfect that is right there. Yeah. Just so perfect. It's got such a wonderful feel to it, being an ocean person. That COVID free. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a ghost. It's like a ghostly thing. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Good way. It's right on the horizon. I thought that was pretty. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, is the right on the horizon. I wouldn't have yeah. expected that. Really slim. Yeah. Not much it's cargo cool. then. Is Tony <laughs> here tonight? No. no. Okay. No. Tony's not here. Congratulations to Tony. First oh, place. Terry. Yeah. Uh, it looked oh, like nice, Terry. Terry. Here she goes again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. She doesn't like to be the, at this part. <laughs> no, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> I wanted to know no, how it worked. She left. Oh, the yeah, colors are great. Yeah, the oh. color palette. Yeah, it's a nice great sense of movement color. there. Mm -hmm. I know. I want to learn how to use this program as soon as I get some time. That's on my list. I've been pestering her about it a few times. So <laughs> she'll teach you. I had a, I had about a, a one hour session with her and it was amazing. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Very and that's cool. Trisha. Right. Yeah, in my red <laughs> shirt again. Oh, okay. all right. I thought I recognized that red. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, nice. Terry. Yeah. Nature Basic, four images, honorable mention, Fritz. Oh, nice. Is he here tonight? Yeah, Fritz is here. Yes. But he's on mute. Fritz is not here. He's on he, mute. He's on, he is here. Congratulations to Fritz. Straw follower. Nice. Third nice. place. Nice. Bill. Whoa. Hi. Oh, hey, Bill. Wow. All right. We haven't seen him much. No, he's he's not here. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot. Great, great image. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great good. character. It's like a character shot. It's wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It's a cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> the one foot on the tip of the needle. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> to Bill. Second place. Bill again. Oh, wow. gosh. That's a pretty amazing shot. 
Yeah, that really is. Yeah, it is. That's fabulous. I've never seen insects like, I mean, that's a really interesting insect. Yeah, and, and the background fabulous. is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The soft yeah. light, right? Yeah. 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 It's like I a har that, harlequin. I always say that the light is appropriate, not necessarily good or bad, but it's appropriate for this. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very much. Nice. Congratulations to Bill. First yeah. place, Mark. All right, hey, Mark. Mark. Uh, nice one. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, these, these are really cool. I love hoverflies. The one thing I used up all my two hundred word or characters, but these are also <laughs> bee mimics. They, um, if you look at the pattern on, you know on the back it, it really looks kind of like a bee and it's a defensive mechanism but um hoverflies the variety and all that's just very amazing to me um so yeah, yeah it's well done it's really well Beautiful. you have to get a kind. picture you have to get a picture this good to identify it <laughs> <laughs> and by the way thank you to those that coached me on this one i i, I get a lot of help from the group so thank you you know who you are Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nature Intermediate, four <laughs> images, honorable mention. <laughs> Sherry. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice. Mm -hmm. Luscious. Thank, thank you. That was a super low tide, so they, they were pretty cool to see. I've never heard of leaf barnacles before. That's really neat. I yeah. had to look them up. <laughs> Did yeah, I, I thought those were goose barnacles. I didn't didn't know that there was this is the different one. Interesting. Yeah, they actually have long stems, and I should have taken some additional pictures, but I really don't like Siri, so I didn't do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun looking up this the identifications. Yeah. That's cool. I like it. Congratulations. Congrats. Yeah. Third place, Betsy. Oh, uh, oh thank you very much. Um, this was a wonderful bear. I have to say, I spent about a half hour with this bear at the side of the road uh, at many in the many glacier area in Glacier National Park. Um, and he was just doing his thing. Um, it was just wonderful. Thank you very much. Mm, well done. Nice, nice, nice light. Mm. Very nice. Nice light. Yeah. Congratulations. Second place, Ronnie. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, cool. I like her a lot. Great stretch. She was here. Where is she? He's on mute. You're on mute, Ronnie. No longer no. here. Here she no, is. No, I'm here. Um, okay. This is my first um, entry in the nature category. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so you will notice that I forgot the Latin name. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, no this is my, fir my first successful um, eye tracking um um test you know trial uh -huh. uh, and it was it was pretty amazing um yeah so this is pretty much straight out of the camera Great. just crop. Wow. so thank you thanks very wow. much good good capture on very nice thank you, thank you. Nice lighting too. congratulations yeah the lighting first place greg yeah. Mm. And he's there you go, Greg. That's amazing. Really Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's just sure beautiful. beautiful. It's quite a story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, great. Very good write up. Wow. Congratulations, Greg. Wow. Nature advanced. Five images. Honorable mention. Trisha. Ah, um, was a Trisha pick. <laughs> this looked like a lizard to me, so that's that's one of the reasons I really liked it. 
Um, mm. It's in Cambria, California. And I thought that wow. Tifoni only showed up at Salt Point. I didn't realize that it was more prolific than that. And the beaches there were, you know, the, the rocks on the beaches were covered with it. It was just gorgeous. And I really like trying to find shapes um, in this type of rock. So uh, thank you. Yeah, Great. Nice to see. That's something that a lot of people don't look at so much, right? Mm -hmm. If you spend time, it's amazing what you can find mm -hmm. in the less obvious. <clears throat> it's just hard to isolate a composition on some of this because it's so so much of it's so beautiful, but it's like how do you get yeah. a composition sometimes? I, I think mm -hmm. that you know what's what's effective, as I mentioned before, the 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 configuration of shapes, uh, even though you know I call a shape an area of texture, right? So you can see that's wow. curving that curving mm -hmm. shape coming down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you can kind of abstract uh, those areas and work with shapes yeah. and just keep experimenting. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, very nice. Honorable mention, Tara. I knew it. <laughs> oh, you get that. Oh, with her <laughs> macro. So good. Intimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intimate. Yeah. Good word for it. Yeah, she's so good. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to get focus when you have other elements in the way if you don't focus oh, properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The flower could catch the and not the the bee itself. Yeah. I wonder if she could hear it snoring. Congratulations to Tara. Third yeah. place. Guy. Wow. That's beautiful guy. <clears throat> that is really beautiful. Is Guy here? No. I don't no. think so. No, he usually is. Well, congratulations, Guy. That's, that's yeah, congratulations. If this is third, yeah. what's first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not tough. easy. Good stuff. No kidding. Second place. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. boy. Jeez. Great story. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Gruesome. Herb's not here. Oh. My favorite birds. <laughs> Fascinating. You don't want to come back as a seal in a second life. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to Herb. Yeah. First place. Jennifer. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I just just fell in love with these puffins. Yeah. And so. uh, just really, really spent a lot of time chasing around after them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this guy, this rhinoceros guy, he mm. was he had such an attitude about him. I really liked him. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And I really enjoyed your commentary on photos. Well, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's amazing to have the artistic um, ability and the technical ability. I mean, it's, it's a pretty highly skilled technical thing to pull off this focus and all that. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy, even though it's part of your craft, right? I hope so. I try. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Nice. Just wonderful, Jennifer. Really nice. Congratulations. Mm. Nature Masters, six <laughs> images, honorable mention. Mike. Oh. It's not here, is it? Do you think he's not here? How did he do this? Yeah, really. I know, really. He must have waited a long time. Yeah, that, that's those birds are fast. fast man. It's a really good capture. A long time with the birds. Wow. It's Very quite cool. a storyline. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. 
<laughs> but there were a lot of tricks to get this. It's about the birds and the bees, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we should be watching this. <laughs> All right. <it's> no. <laughs> okay, you can look the other way, Mike. <laughs> You're going to have to have an X rated section. <laughs> you have to add a new section. Really? Congratulations to Mike. Honorable yeah. mention, Bill. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. This is great, Bill. Yeah, these, these guys are pretty amazing. I cormorants with really tiny wings, and I and then finally saw this one bird coming out of the water. So you can see how pitifully small his wings really are. <laughs> and look at the light on his wings. Yeah, they had backlight. Yeah, That's really amazing. Just, it was just going in the evening, so the sun was going down, and so I had really nice low light. But they Good. use their wings for swimming. They, they don't need to mm. fly, and they can't fly. <laughs> oh. My God. They're wingless, wingless cormorants, or flightless cormorants, I guess is the right term. Oh. Interesting. And, and in a place like that, where there are no the predators, basically on an island, there are no natural predators, so they, they don't, need, don't need to fly. Fascinating. Very cool. <laughs> they can swim fast. Well, the quality of light is really good. Almost. Nicely done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable mention, Terry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's oh, so cool. No, she's gone. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, congratulations. Great, Terry. Terry. Yes, nice yawn. Pretty spectacular. Congratulations to Terry. Third place, yeah. Tamara. Oh. Mm. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. really unique. Well, that that's the best Garanuk picture I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Ronnie, have you seen another? <laughs> <laughs> but it is a great picture. Look at the muscles! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A gymnast. Neck is fascinating. The timing is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to tomorrow. Second yeah. place. Jerry. Oh, oh, oh boy. Great oh. sequence. Hi, everybody. Um, <clears throat> I've been watching these uh, Osprey at Lake Sonoma uh, yeah. for a couple of years. And uh, I've, I would was able to photograph them. I now with the go up to 1200 millimeters. Uh, oh. oh, and uh, wow. wow, you know, I just spend several hours watch the behavior. It's, it's great to uh, observe the behavior of them and uh, be able to capture all of that. So, thank you. Amazing job. Hey, Jerry, good patience. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to and see the you. focus. Yeah, nice. Nice. I think you got a fast enough shutter speed to stop that action. Wow. Yeah. You got to have good autofocus or a good focus on it, too. Yeah, yeah they're, they're about a 3200th of a second when they're flying, is what I usually shoot. Yeah. Uh, and it's really far away because in, in order to, to get almost at, at this level, I don't know if you know the area, but you got to go way on the, uh, the other, uh, pretty far away and up on the hill. Oh, and, uh, the hill. Yep. So, where the picnic table is yeah yeah where the picnic tables are so at, at 1200 yeah. millimeters are still cropped in sweet wow that's oh, wow. they are so sharp yeah really yeah. Oh, beautiful that's nicely done jerry thank you congratulations first place yeah. jerry also oh, oh, oh sorry. Wait, let's, right. there we go wait that's Anne. Anne. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, right in. That's a great shot. Wow. Nice. Great shot. With an iPhone. <laughs> wow. With an iPhone. Wow. You know, it's really low tide and you want to look at everything up really close. And the first time I went, I didn't take any full shots of the scenery, you know, and I so the second time I went, I, I made sure that I would try to get um, a landscape and 
Where where was it, Ann? Picture of Iowa. Pardon me. Uh, Pinnacle Beat Gulch. Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pinnacle Gulch. Pinnacle Gulch. South of Doran. Yeah. And uh, so, thanks for getting me there. <laughs> with me, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a very unique nature photograph. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do something about global warming. Yeah. As often as I can. Well, you did it. I think it's a, an important story, and that's yeah. partly what photography is about. Yeah. <laughs> Send it to the PD. Yeah. 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 Really? Wow. Good. There's a powerful in journalism also. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yes. There's a there's a photographer in Canada called Edward Patinsky. And he's done he's done films and stuff, but he's a very famous photographer for environmental stuff. And it kind of reminds me of the stories he tells with his large format camera. What's his last name? Uh, Ed Pratinsky. I could maybe send uh if I can be reminded, I could send a um, a link to uh, to Bill, and then he could hand it out. But there's there's films and stuff he has, but it's it's a interesting style of photography, but recording stuff like this. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'd really be interested to see it. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yay. Pictorial basic, honorable mention. Mm. It's like spirit clouds. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love the composition of the clouds. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Fritz. Honorable mention. Mark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just beautiful image, Mark. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll credit Tony for that. He told me about Wichika and the importance of going there early. I realized I'm more of an afternoon photographer, but I saw, <laughs> saw some really, really cool stuff in the morning. So I'm trying to get out of bed more <laughs> for my photography. But nice, it's a really nice cool company. place. Yeah. You'll Good have timing to on where it is. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Second place, Laura. Mm -hmm. Laura's yeah. loose. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, I was trying my hand at flower photography, and that was just a dahlia that had bloomed in my yard, and thought I'd give it a shot. So thank you. It's pretty amazing. Design. Design. Macro lens, huh? Yeah. No, I actually did that before I got my macro. That was with oh, my okay. my my big zoom lens. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, there you go. Right on. It's a Good pretty, job. pretty amazing design. Yep. Congratulations. First place, Lucy. Oh, mm. all right, Lucy. Very nice. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, I, it's basically the way it came out of the camera. I really was happy with the light on the wings. Uh huh. It softened the. Uh, foreground. That's about it. It's really Where pretty. Was this? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank Where you. was it? Um, it was uh, in near uh -huh. Sebastopol. Oh. Uh, near near um, Valley Ford, actually. There's a wetland yeah, there. Very oh. Dry oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Beautiful. And welcome back. Yes, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Pictorial Intermediate. Third place. Pat. Oh, mm. I love this. My puffing step first mm. place in my chair. Oh, I was oh. so pleased. Mm. Oh. He's not here. Not here. No. Probably out hiking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miles tonight. Yeah. Congratulations to Pat. Second place. Ellen. Aha. Ellen. Good. 
I'm here. Do you, do you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Um, Ellen, are you going to try this in black and white too? You know, I did. And I, it didn't have the impact for me. And I just like that yummy yellow. In fact, I almost titled it Yummy Yellow. I'm thinking more like buttercream. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, good job. Congratulations. First place, Sherry. Oh, this is oh thank you for thank you so much. And I'm glad you noticed that the triangles kind of at the top were the cables and whatnot because I played with this crop a lot and uh yeah I, I i i really like the way it turned out thank you so much for your feedback mm -hmm. congratulations right. sherry yeah, yeah. well yeah. seen good 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 seeing your face good crop too yep. oh yeah i don't have good internet so i keep my camera off otherwise i get a lot of distortion <laughs> hearing you guys uh, sherry uh, where exactly were you because i've been i was close oh this is the this. um actually this day i hiked down to kirby cove and back up and then i went at just the very top on the marin side um the overlook i don't know what it's mm -hmm. called but there's mm -hmm. a battery up there and it's where most of the tourists are and so they have the love locks up there oh interesting. very interesting that's really cool. some days the wind is incredible yeah it was pretty powerful <laughs> that's beautiful Congratulations. Thank well, you. Well done. Pictorial Advanced, seven images, honorable mention. Steve. Mm. 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 Thanks. Yeah, this is a composite. It was actually done as a daytime image of that barn um, that I converted to night. And then I have a um, that's actually from Lake Sonoma, the, the uh, Milky Way taken with a different lens so I could get more of the core in it. So it's obviously completely inaccurate, but I just like the composition. And uh, so I put it together. I, I spent an absurd amount of time on, on this image, more time than I should have. But anyway, thanks. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Very good. Congratulations. Honorable Jackson. mention, Steve again. Ah, oh, very nice. And it's interesting that it was mentioned, like, I wonder what the trees look like without the effect. This has a topaz effect to it. Mm -hmm. And without it, it's just, you, you lose the, th this well, has a more ethereal foggy yeah. effect. Yeah. But when I when I tried it more straight, and believe me, I tried it every which way, um, it's just there was too much going on, and it was there was no way to isolate. Um, and doing it this way, it made it so that it gave it more of a center of interest, kind of in front, and then and it made the the reflections kind of stand out. So it it, it worked out well, but I, I knew I'd get probably some criticism on this for the way it was done. But artistically, I, I love it. I'm I'm very happy with it. So well, anyway, it's, it's, trem it's tremendous Great. mood. Yeah, yeah, Moody. beautiful. I love what happened in the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a ridiculous amount of work because that was just dirt in the front. There was <laughs> water and then some roots, and I worked on adding shadows and light and cloning some stuff to try and make it look like roots underwater with mud but it actually if you saw the foreground it was very distracting um and ugly actually so um, so those <laughs> trees, like three hours those trees steve are probably um those twisted shapes right oh yeah oh yeah um, yeah somewhat yes yeah, somewhat oh, but yeah. the the topaz filter i used did amplify that is that looks like a person in a boat there what's that on the right side is that something in the um no these are just stumps oh stumps okay yeah stumps. Yeah. Three, three stumps in the water right oh, it's got a fantastic mood cool. yeah yeah that was my goal is to get that yeah. pull that mood out and do everything possible to pull the mood out of it and then it, it worked yeah. thank you 
Congratulations. Honorable mention, Phil. Oh, um, hello. I uh, took this uh, on one of our field trips um, uh, with Tony and the gang. We went down to uh, Battery Mandel down in Marin. Oh. And um, it, it was pretty much a straight shot. I was about uh, 70 feet away. And uh, the only thing I had to do was clone out a few artifacts in the background there on the upper top. So other than that, it's pretty much uh, as shot. Beautiful. Nice. Very nice. And a good pose. Congratulations. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Mm -hmm. Linda. Um. Well, thank you. That was a foggy morning in Annadale State Park, you know, which is down the road a piece, but I, I loved the fog and the hangy things from the trees. Stuff. Yeah, beautiful texture and mood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Congratulations. Third place. Guy. Mm. Wow. What Pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. That's just really spectacular. Mm. Is Guy here? No. Oh. I haven't seen him. No. Congratulations to Guy. Yeah. Second place. Stunning. Trisha. Yay. Ah. <laughs> Bobby Sabi. <laughs> this is also from a field trip. Um, this was the, the scavenger hunt in Petaluma, California, just about 15, 20 miles away from uh, Santa Rosa. And there are store windows that are covered with paper. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've photographed it before. I, I love the folds that happen in the paper. And um, depending on what's happening in the sky and the surroundings, sometimes there's color and sometimes it's just a real brown and shadow. But um, this one had a little bit of color and I amplified it a little bit. And thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Yeah, good cool. job. Nice. Way to go, Trisha. It's nice. extremely powerful. Thank very you. Sensual. <laughs> yes, very sensual. <laughs> it reminds me of the Frank Gehry architecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Organic. Yeah. Congratulations. First place. Jennifer. Hey. Oh, yeah. oh, this is amazing. Hello. Oh, thank you so much. I I just love this photo, but I didn't think anybody else would like it. I'm just so pleased. Are you kidding? <laughs> I know, really, huh? <laughs> nice light. So ethereal. Fabulous. Composition. That could be a book cover and a very high-end art book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Outstanding. Nothing yep. about that, right? Amazing. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then you could put the puffins inside too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Make a big metal that. print. Yeah. <laughs> yes, always... I do want to print this one. I I do. Absolutely. Wow. I'm always intrigued when. Uh, when um, something so artful is actually something that's real and in focus and everything else. I do all kinds of experimenting and all kinds of stuff, but what really gives me a kick is when something was real and straightforward that looks so unreal. And that's yeah. What this is. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. We had the comment not too long ago in the sky, so I still kind of had comets on the brain when I saw the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really beautiful, Jennifer. Wow. wow. Thank you. Nice. Congratulations. Pictorial Masters, five images, honorable mention. Nancy. Uh, yeah. Well, what you said was exactly what I uh, wanted, I wanted to wonder what, what, where, what, how, but give a feeling of a combination of perhaps a cemetery, 
or um, this the reference all quiet on the Western Front. It had that feeling of 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 the uh, the mm -hmm. field of battle, and it's a, a, a it's it was actually a Car Carrizo Plain. Uh, it's a uh, it's a vineyard that was uh, left to fallow. Ah. And uh, if you look close, I left in, you can see the, the lines going across. It also could look like uh, it, telephone poles, but both yeah, uh, from I wanted to a little bit of feeling. And yeah, it's, it's like one of the joys of not having, have, not having to win is to put things in that want to speak. Yeah, so the viewer can interpret that on so many different levels and mm -hmm. even without the scale, right? I mean, yeah, so it's it's great when you can <clears throat> get people thinking about different things. And it just dawns on me that I, I sent you an email today, didn't I? Or did you get it? Yes. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I did. It just dawned on me now. Oh, that name, I recognize I joined it. Your yeah. It's a usual, an unusual name. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Ad. Yeah. And honorable mention, Nancy again. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, again, hmm. this is a COVID, uh, a COVID pick. Uh, it was in the back of the refrigerator. And I pulled <laughs> it out and Gary said, go get, some, go get your macro. And I was uh, 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 like, <laughs> I loved it. And, I, and people hate right? it, and I love it. So I was—I figured it was a perfect one to to put in and see what kind of results it got. So, it's very painterly, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it yeah. was a capture one, and it was very painterly with capture one. And then I threw it in the Nick, you know, Color Effects Pro to kind of pull out uh, some features and that. But basically, it. Mm. It was mostly uh, capture one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Good. I'm glad I got a chance to say something. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And here and here and here here your how you reacted. That was great. Okay. Well, I sent you that link to a past newsletter, which was all about um, when was the last time you had a creative idea or something like that. I think it was. So you might enjoy that too not that you need that but just interesting food for thought right it's all good it, it leads to different things so this is a, a mold you know yeah moldy uh, <laughs> uh moldy <Okay>. mm -hmm. <laughs> congratulations pretty cool place. tomorrow <laughs> i love the title <laughs> 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 You can, there's so many there's so many comments i bet you can come up with on this like if you said <laughs> please add a caption to this <laughs> well uh tamara uh i'm actually texting her letting her know right now but she had texted me the day she's on the road right now and she she said does this does this uh judge have a sense of humor oh and you I, bet I, do. I read yeah <laughs> so i'm sure this is when she put put this one in I could give you a thousand titles to this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations to Tamara. Second place. Yeah. Mike. Oh yeah, it looks like I'm like like it. What a richness to that image. Yeah. And was it happenstance to find that car, that antique? <laughs> Is Mike is Michael here? He was, he was here earlier, here. but I okay. haven't seen him. But don't you I think, think they were coming back from Oregon? Yeah. If that was a brand new car, it might not be the same, right? No. no. Yeah, something right. About that mood. Congratulations to Mike. Sometimes you can't explain it, yeah. Tony. Ah, beautiful. Mm. Here, Tony's not here. Huh? Nope. <clears throat> Beautiful balance. 
Congratulations to Tony. Travel basic, one image, first place, fits. Mm. Mm. Always an amazing experience to see that in real. Congratulations to Fritz. Travel Intermediate, two images, second place, Betsy. Where is she? She's there. You're muted, Betsy. Here we go. Yes, I was. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's an amazing view. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> to stay, to stay there is is a pretty remarkable, memorable experience. Um, anyway, facetiously, I this pretty much uses up all my Glacier National Park photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. You have to go back. <laughs> Wouldn't yeah. mind. Field trip. Yeah. <laughs> did you stay here? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, I did. Everyone should stay there at least once. How yeah. long in advance do you have to book? A year. A year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's so worth it. The only thing is, is I kind of... Um, no, it was that we stayed down the road at a much less expensive place for a few nights. And then we came and stayed here for two nights just to experience it. Uh -huh. um, and it is, it's very Swiss and all of that. But the only thing is I feel bad for the guys that work in the lobby. They have to wear later hosen because of the whole Swiss, <laughs> Swiss uh -huh. theme. Um, anyway, I'm sure it's a good gig. <laughs> uh -huh. Good tips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as the photographers don't have to wear that. <laughs> yeah, right. That would be good. Anyway, thank you. Congratulations. First place. Pat. <laughs> oh, this is great. There see. they are hiking. I wish we could ask her how she processed this because it's really cool. It's that old time kind of feel. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. no, the, the color contrast in the grasses is excellent. Yeah. yeah. It's like an old postcard, what right? Month, what month cheese there? It could be in uh, like uh, analog is has a lot of. Yes. Uh, yeah, it has a real analog feel to it. Yeah. Love it. Congratulations to Pat. Travel advanced, three images. Third place, Linda. Oh, <laughs> my, thank you. This is the, I, Monument Valley is just such an amazing place and the colors, we were there in May and the, the, the clouds are just fantastic and the colors are just, sort of awesome. You can just sit there and your mouth is hanging open the whole time. <laughs> you get it. But uh, thank you. Love the colors. That's so yeah. It's thank one you. thing that, you know, the, the land is always there, but the skies are always different. for Exactly. Yeah. Oh, boy. Congratulations. Second place, Guy. Beautiful. Out here. Beautiful lighting. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, I love the colors in it. Gorgeous lighting. It's nice to have that coolness compared to the warm that makes it more amplified. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Guy. First place, Bill. Wow. Beautiful. Great shot. Really nice. Bill, not here? Not here. 
Congratulations to Bill. Travel Masters, five images, honorable mention. Jerry. Mm. Oh, very cool. You still here, Jerry? Guess not. Congratulations to Jerry. Honorable mention, Nancy. I love this place. I'm glad. Thank you. That's yeah, nice form. Fireworks. Congratulations. Third place, Bill. Oh, thank you. Good Bill. Look like one of yours. <laughs> That's pretty striking. Yeah, it's, actually, it makes me kind of sad because they, they, they have golden eagles captive for hunting. But you see the blue sky and the blue <clears throat> open openness of the sky in Mongolia. And, and then these guys are always... Uh, Captive, but uh, so I anyway, knew that's what I was trying to trying to show. Mm -hmm. Congratulations! Just looking at <laughs> second place, Tamara. Oh, Aww. that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, the, the eyeball. The capture. Yeah. Great timing. And the look on the little guy's face. Yeah. Like, he looks like he's taking a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Just wondering where that tongue where that tongue is going to. He's got that little treat. He's got a little treat he's gonna put on the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> gonna feed yeah. it. I don't know if I can do it, Mom. <laughs> I'm wondering, this is, I don't want to beat a, a thing to death, but I'm wondering what this would look like in black and white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the hat, the color of the yeah. hat. Take your attention away from that. I think it might equalize the design. Mm -hmm. And Tamara you know, is a specialist in black and white. Oh yeah, yeah she's really white. good in black and white. Yeah, and you know, you could, there's some amazing transitions to black and white and, you know, um, especially mimicking some of the analog films like in silver effects and so on. But yeah, I think, I think, I think that might be interesting because I think I find the blue hat dominates my eye mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't really want to take away from the, the giraffe and the child interacting. Right. Mm -hmm. It's just, a, I just want to throw it out there, but it's, it's always good to think about this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. The structure is excellent. So, yeah. Congratulations to Tamara. <clears throat> First place, Tony. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Beautiful. It's very difficult. Um, I have very big, I have a big difficulty with first, second, and third and stuff like that. So I go over and over again, but it's really difficult to do. Um, when all, all images are so good, <clears throat> you know, yes. but this is a wonderful image. Mm -hmm. Stunning. Absolutely. But a great body of work though, overall. Congratulations to Tony. And drum roll. <laughs> What's this? Oh, this is. Best to show. Best to show for the evening goes to. I knew oh, it. I, knew it. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, thank you. Oh man. <laughs> it was tough. It was just such a beautiful image, but um. Yeah. So I was to choose these from the first, right? And I, so I gathered up all the the images and on my computer screen, and then. Over some time, I kept going back and forth, and I, so I kept coming to this. Yeah. Oh, oh I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Yeah. Great image. Congratulations, Jennifer. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. That's a great picture. Thank you. Thank you. You, got to, you got to print this. Yeah. yeah. Thank for you sure. for your thoughtful consideration of everything. Yeah, it was really, really wonderful. Learned a lot. Learned yeah, I hope lot. that I hope that this kind of thing can. I know in some camera clubs it becomes a very negative night, so I'm hoping that this becomes, uh, you know, something to think about, stuff to think about, right? Mm -hmm. We're always learning new things, but I think that's, it should be a collection of, you know, constructive ideas as opposed like to- new ideas. Yeah, I suppose yeah. this is right or wrong. I think it shouldn't be that way. That's the way I approach, I approach my teaching all my life that way. So I, 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 there's nothing special about my work. I can, you know, I think I encourage people to, to improve, keep improving and changing and evolving and growing and never have right and wrong. That's one thing is the most important. Yeah. So more yeah. appropriate light. Yeah, appropriate light. Yeah, appropriate, not good or bad, just appropriate. <laughs> like I, my friends would say, oh, the light is bad or it's good. I said, well, it's just not appropriate for what we're looking at. You know? <laughs> Off light is great for some things with the insects and the flowers and but maybe harsh shadows are good for street photography when you have color and black shadows and somebody a silhouette. Yeah. So it's all about appropriate, not about, it's, it's, it's bad to get into right and wrong with anything, right? I like the loosen up. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that was a great comment, yeah. <laughs> uh, and always think about Gary Larson for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I had a picture in, a, in Oaxaca, Mexico in a, in a market inside where there was there, there they, they would slaughter the pigs and they would have their heads hanging on on hooks so i carefully positioned myself where i had the pig's head on the hook was right in line with the guy at the butcher's shoulder as he was chopping oh, but, you know that was my humor right <laughs> I'm vegetarian, so. but I just thought, this is my gary larson yeah and i'm always it's looking fire. for humor and if you ever look at the body of work from elliot Irwitt. How do you spell his last name? Elliot Irwitt. I don't know how you spell Irwitt, but uh, he R W I T T. Right, you got it. And uh, he did a lot of juxtapositions of like he did a study of in New York where it was just uh, the dogs and the owners knees down, right? So he would just oh, see right, that. yeah. And and he has a whole series of different things. He looks for humor in in reality, juxtaposing elements that are hilarious, but it's real. So I think a sense of humor is important in general, just for, just for functioning in life, right? I, I look, I always think about how fast can I find this funny whenever I'm in a situation. <laughs> I kind of drive some people crazy because I was, you know, I one guy in my workshop said, I don't like people joking around. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think joking around is part of being creative. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, I, I've never grown up. And even though I'm 65, I don't, as a man, I don't think men ever do grow up. However, <laughs> I wouldn't want to grow up because I, I want to laugh. And, you know, it's bad enough that other stuff is bad enough. You got to, you got to have the antidote is the, the laughing, right? That's so... If my husband, husband wasn't funny, I'd kill him. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> stress, pressure. The stress, yeah. I can't take any more of this COVID stuff. Yeah. So how are you doing um, where you live? I know it's different in different parts, right? But we have an enlightened commute, um, county. And so we're not as bad as Florida. other places. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Could be worse. We're going back to masks, though, everywhere. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Um, yeah, we do too. You know, I'm double vaccinated, but I know that I'm, I understand that the Delta variant is, um, can, I can still get it, but. Not only I think can it's you a good get idea. it, but you can pass it on. Oh, yeah. of course, yeah. To I mean, yeah. to the unvaccinated. Right. Yeah, it's, it's weird though, isn't it? The whole, I also understand that unvaccinated will allow the mutations of the virus and stuff, right? That's right. That's what's dangerous. Yeah, that's the scary part. I mean, it's not like, the world is not like a container of political states and provinces and countries. Things move around, right? So yeah. Yeah. if it's bad in one area, there's nothing to say it can't 
keep spreading. It's like a drop of food coloring in water as it slowly moves. Right. Canada just opened, didn't it? Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. And then, you know, we've got touches of the Delta, but um, each province, unfortunately, each province does their kind of own thing. Yeah. Like the states. Some are loose and other ones aren't, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here. But the but the eastern provinces have been extremely good, like Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and that have been extremely good. And then you know, like Quebec is like they just let it all go to hell. The first part I had the like highest. France. <laughs> Pardon me. It's like France. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean that's right. They have a different way to think that. But they had the highest death toll of all the provinces. And now and now at West, it's starting to come back. But we're doing pretty good here. Like where I live, I think the population of my city is a, um, it's pretty small. It's like 180,000. But we've only had, from the entire pandemic, we've only had one death. Wow. That's and no really nursing big. home sicknesses. And uh, so, that, but then Toronto, the city of Toronto has been really bad. It's a big city, right? Yeah. A, a same size as Chicago, but anyway, I mean, it must be more difficult in large centers, but everybody has different sort of precautions and rules and, but everybody that travels seems to, you know, spread it around, but we've opened up our country to the U.S. And we did, we haven't opened it to you. you Sorry. Won't let us back, you won't let us go back down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, lived, okay. I lived in, yeah, I, I live in a, uh, in Redwood. I live in the Redwood, Redwood Forest on the side of a mountain uh, in West Sonoma County and uh, next nice. town over, um, well, you know, only like a few, two or 3,000 people, mm -hmm. but, and, and very liberal. We're a mm -hmm. huge liberal community. And um, they uh, just started closing restaurants and bars because the uh, vaccinated uh, uh, workers, uh, in, in them have become positive as mm -hmm. well as a number of uh, customers. So um, mm -hmm. it, it, so even even in our little community that was doing really, really well, uh, it's it's really bad right now. I think we're the worst, uh, Burnville, I, I, I think I read was the worst in the county. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's too bad, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, I've got, I got a twice rescheduled trip to Colombia and then also to Japan next year. But and I don't know what to say to people that um, are wanting to book their flights because I can't predict what's going to happen in Colombia in this January. Mm. And nor can I predict what's going to happen in April or May in, in Japan, in Tokyo. Right now they're in a state of emergency. Right. And how can you predict anything anyway? There's really no way. I mean, it changes every week or month. Yeah. It could be like a wildfire, it just could explode again. I know that U U.S. has, I mean, U.S. is a big country and it's got a lot of population, a lot of landmass, but you guys are getting a lot of cases per day, right, in general? Oh, yeah. It's kind of weird, though, when you think of it. You think Certain of it parts of the South have a, a much lower incidence of um, vaccinated populations, and so they're getting really slammed right now. Yeah, We're talking about a failure of the medical system in those communities. It's nurses really, are giving up. It's really too bad. It's really burning out a lot of nurses. Oh yeah, too. Yeah. Well, it's so discouraging when people could get vaccinated and don't, and then they have to take care of them. Yeah. And they could have avoided it. So. Hmm. It's a tough one. So. On that happy note. <laughs> on a yeah, happy I'm note. Yeah. Not. <laughs> Let's be creative. <laughs> we can only photograph our way out of this. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so help. much. Thanks. So yeah, thanks much. for a great thanks evening. A it was great. Really Thank great evening. Long much. evening and a great evening. Thank Hope you. Good. Thank you again. Thanks I'm for always, staying up. <laughs> I'm always worried about uh, this kind of thing. You know, but I hope it was useful. And it was great. Excellent. Excellent. Really good. Thank More you. than useful. Okay. <laughs> it was fun. And, and, thanks fun. For, and thanks for answering my questions, Bill, about my maybe my stupid questions about stuff, but no, you're you've been great to work with. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. Okay. Come back again. I hope to see you in, in real life at yeah. some point. 
Uh, that would be... be back down when things settle. That would be great. I, I won't say when things get normal. But I don't know if anything is going to be normal anymore, but when things are kind of okay. Yeah. They're definitely yeah, okay. going to come down. Take care, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Nice to see Thank everybody. You.